Hey, what's up? I'm Vanessa. I'm Mary. I'm Gillian. I'm Rupka, and this is the very latest episode of the Full Fluent Devs podcast. Your go-to place for relatable content for the African diaspora down under. The black of the podcast, the sweet of the bands. Hello, hello. Hello. Hey, hey. hey. How y'all doing? You know, I'm going to say... I was just going to say Vanessa's words. We're doing. We're, yeah, we're doing. doing. Yeah. She says it with a Z. <laughs> we're doing. No, we're good. I'm good. I don't know about you guys. I'm living life, darling. Yeah, man. Life is good. What about you? <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> we shall so not talk about the working working working. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, if, if anyone goes a couple of episodes back, they'll hear the Vim Repka had for work. <laughs> I can hear it slowly. <laughs> I know. But, yeah, her reaction was just like, mm, this work life, baby. Yeah, eh? was so excited. Hmm. I'm basically rich. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a I'm working a girl now, full time, going into the office. Yeah. You weren't yeah. even working from home. You are in trekking the office. In, the, in oh. the office. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot, but it is a lot. But we move. Such mm. is life. Such is grown up life. Mm-hmm. Um, but today uh-huh. we do have a rather distinguished guest. Yeah. Yes. She is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she's even nodding. She knows. She's even profusely. nodding. <laughs> she's nodding. Um, influencer extraordinaire. Mm. Author. Mm. Entrepreneur. Mm. Flex mummy. Yeah. Welcome. Give it up, yo. Even something missing from that. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. No, it wasn't. No. DJ, okay. author, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. A true she does she. all. She yeah. does all, literally. Jillable trades, That's honestly. It. How Thank are you doing? I'm well. Yeah. I feel good by choice. Mm. Mm. Get into that. So I'm yeah. day two in my flop era. I'm menstruating. It's not a yeah. good time. Oh. But it's the same old story. Like, I don't want to be medicated. Mm. I don't want to take naprogesic. I don't want to take neurofin. It, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just, I want to suffer through it. Really? I have a dull pain at the moment. Mm-hmm. I know it's coming. And mm-hmm. I was about to take something. And I was like, nah, you can, mm-hmm. you no, can chuck through it. Do you know what? Do do this if you all? guys are suffering, I don't think y'all had the pain that I had. I was literally on the floor every single that was time. Me. Like dying. Until I went on birth control. But I'm off it now. Mm. Yeah. Was, remember I said yeah, we Oh, yeah, true. But oh, funnily enough, with age, mine has settled. Interesting. Yeah. And in this weather too... Ugh, yeah, the weather's well, quite foul. It's it. quite disgusting. Otherwise, you're doing good though. Oh yeah, vibing out mm-hmm. here. <laughs> 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 I feel like we are the not the leaders in this episode because you're so in the podcast world. Mm. You know what I mean? I feel very like I need to be schooled. Yeah. Well, I no, I mean, there's what? five of us here. The no. fact that you can coordinate a four person discussion. Hmm. But babes, yeah, do you yeah. know the? Oh my goodness! It's <laughs> not a for me, small I'm like, let me just nod and wait for the gap. <laughs> <laughs> When we laugh at the same time, oh. Oh. so bad for our listeners that the, the freaking speakers crackle. <laughs> so horrendous. And people tell us, oh, you guys laugh. It's usually me. It's too much. <laughs> they tell you. Yeah. It's okay. So this is why I don't people. ask for feedback. <laughs> <laughs> or create an environment where it's expected. Don't worry about Seriously, it. Seriously, we might just ban feedback <laughs> for our mental health. Please, for the host's oh, sake, please oh don't tell us what you mm-hmm. But. Many. So, for those people who live under a rock mm-hmm, or just, literally. you know, have just been born today, <laughs> um, tell us about, about a bit about yourself and what it is you do. Mm. Um, what, the job titles? Everything. Mm. What, what, yeah, because you titles. do a lot. A lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's so, so tricky. It is. I usually avoid saying it. Totally fine. I'm like, where to begin in a way that's relevant? Mm. Yeah. You know, but I do do a lot. And I think that I would, if I want to summarize, I say I work in media and e-commerce because I think that's fine at this point. Mm. And then I'm an opportunist. So I go where the money is Mm -hmm. if the money is enjoyable. Mm. I feel like that's not enough. What do you mean? Uh, Because I feel like she does more in Uh, media. Medium e-commerce, it sounds nah, like it sounds... Okay, let's go from the... Be- let's go from <laughs> yeah. the- we'll go from the start. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's go first jobs to now jobs, okay. if I can remember it in the order. So I started working in PR um, when I was like 18, 19-ish. Yes. PR, social media marketing, while working at Chic and Zoo and Jewelry Store and Crust Pizza and all those things. Always two, three jobs at the same time. Crust Pizza in there as well. Of wow. course. They Cash in hand. Pizza. It was incredible. <laughs> Yeah. So good for when you're like 18 or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. True. So shout out to that. And then, um, so then I was also studying because I did really poorly in my HSC, which I was very surprised by, but it makes <laughs> sense in hindsight. Because I think I'm, 
I can connect a lot of concepts and ideas, mm. but I don't enjoy academia because it's very structured mm. yeah. and I'm very uh, abstract, tangent, like an abstract tangential thinker that I'm like, I just want to connect ideas. I don't want to have to figure out the chronological order of why something makes sense okay. unless I'm truly interested in it. Yeah. And my interest ebbs and flows and that doesn't work in an academic environment. You need mm, to be correct. on it. Totally. Um, so then I didn't know what I wanted to do. And because I was, I don't know, an articulate young person I was like, you should be a lawyer. I don't want to be a lawyer. I don't want to <laughs> argue for a living. <laughs> so I didn't, go to any kind of tertiary education for the first year. And then I was like, oh, I'll do fashion business. And then I dropped out because that was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like we're illustrating, like we're 19 in tertiary education illustrating. This yeah. is not a skill that we need. Mm. And then I dropped out of that. And oh, then yeah, I- yeah, for fashion business. Actually, why were they making it illustrate? I think it was so we could understand the breadth and depth of the industry. If you had okay. an understanding of all the moving parts, then you'd be more proficient at doing the job in itself. I think it works in theory, but for where I was, I was like, I don't want to be doing that. Mm. Yeah. And then I, so I dropped out and then I was like, maybe I'll do, wow. Oh. Look at this, look at this. Oh, I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> and then I thought that I would do psychology, but I'm like, I don't want to study. I think that was just fundamental. You have a oh yeah, I better paid it off. Amen. Oh, nice oh, work. Nice work. Nice work. Nice work. <laughs> yeah. So I did three different courses. Hex that was like fifty something thousand. Oh, this wasn't too bad. That's no, good. Yeah. but I yeah. didn't. I didn't go. Mm. I went for six weeks. Yeah. Oh, 50,000 for not going. But I didn't, I didn't drop out before the census. Oh, oh no wonder. Did you know you had to go? the first one. The first Sorry? time. How come you didn't learn the first time to drop out? Because I didn't know. Probably weren't looking, even looking at your hex. No, I wasn't yeah, looking. Yeah. I didn't know I had one until I got an accountant ages later. Oh, and I was like, what is this? I didn't even know. <laughs> I stopped going. <laughs> and then I remember at the time I was watching the hills on mtv iconic and there was this woman there called kelly catrone and she's a very archetypal girl boss mm -hmm. you know she ran a pr company and she just uh, who knows what she did because they didn't really no. show the work mm. but i thought that was cool because even if i couldn't do what she was doing all her employees just looked pretty and mm. they talked and they threw parties and they made connections and so I went to a business college to study PR and business management. And then I dropped out because I was like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> but I was looking at our curriculum, I guess that's what you call it. Yeah. And it said that in the second semester, second semester? Yeah, in the second semester that we would have to get an internship. So I was like, I'm just going to get that mm. now and then I'll learn what I need to learn. So when mm. I got that internship job, yeah. and... I was uh, working as much as possible for free. Eventually they said, well, do you want to come on casually? I was like, yeah, this is six. And then I dropped out to intern casually. And then I stayed at that place until I got a full-time job, okay. which was awesome. PR is a very um, grueling industry. Mm, yeah, okay. It's very misunderstood. It's okay. very, Can't and I it. think it comes down to it being room, like woman run and owned. People yes, don't respect it. Yeah. Therefore the value is not put on the work that you do. Wow. And there's an expectation that you would work above and beyond what's required right. yeah. to gain respect okay. and also to prove that you're worthy of having that retainer or doing that project. Wow. And the way that trickles down from the boss Boston. to the senior, mm -hmm. to the junior, to me, mm. grunt work. Mm. But also I felt really validated. Cause I was like, I didn't even like do that well in in HSC, yeah. yeah. well, my friends like, I am. I'm 30, mm. whatever, whatever. And I'm like, I've got a full-time job, oh, yeah. I'm wow. chilling. And then also, cause you can see the work that you've done. Like if you yeah. work on events and stuff like that, you can walk in a space and be like, I, I did, did this. this. Yeah. Yeah. And right. like, you can see it or you go online and you can see the work you've done. And it's like, I didn't really have to go to uni to do it. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? It's really awesome. And, but I think the tricky thing with PR as well is because you are operating as one cog of a moving part, people often don't want PR to take a lot of, yeah. um, a lot of praise for it because, you know, let's say I do PR for an event and the event goes well, well then the caterer is like, well, it was my food mm. and this is my venue <laughs> and this was my guest listing. Yeah. So what did you really do? Anyway, then I moved from that PR job to another PR job that was more social media marketing. Yeah. But I wasn't doing, I was doing like social media calendars. I mean, at this oh, point there was like Instagram and yeah, Facebook and it was much, like yeah. TGIF with a picture of a sunset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that kind of yeah. vibe. Yeah. Um, but it was so stressful. Mm. And I was, was I remember being agency? 20, it was for an agency, mm. only, uh, only ever worked agency. Mm. 
And my clients were like luxury jewelers, vitamins, children's toys. Mm. And, you know, there's a distinction between being someone who casually uses the internet and social media versus mm -hmm. being a strategic thinker. Mm. And I was not a strategic thinker, mm. but I'm good at interviewing. Mm. So I got the job and I was a manager mm. and I had to manage myself and manage interns. And mm. it just felt like a very Moorish job. You had to give and give and mm. give and give and give. And there was no resolution there was no like okay you done stop yeah. all the projects wrapped up it just the calendars never it just stops. stops yeah it's yeah there's no end goal there's no end goal mm. and it didn't feel like the hills <laughs> 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 something wasn't adding up and then of course office politics and office dynamics i just wasn't prepared for mm. there's something about walking to environments and being a spectacle which is odd considering what i do now but at the time i was like it's so odd to walk into an environment where you are the talking point mm. and you're everyone's source of entertainment and people want to be your friend and you're like babes i'm stressed mm. you know you take lunch and people want to take lunch with you beforehand about i yeah. i the tipping point was when I got a performance review and they're like, everything's going really, really well. But, you know, people have been talking about how you don't go to the after work drinks and it's like really putting oh, a damper. And that's such a big oh part goodness. of PR. Yeah. And I, cause, but the job is so social. You're, you're yeah. socializing all, all the time. time. Yeah. So it, like it's everyday chit chat, yeah. chit chat, chit chat. I'm not now going to go to Shell House at 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Mm. to chit chat with the same people. And yeah. then sleep a blink and see you again. <laughs> <laughs> and... I just felt like the feedback was so pointed and it was mm. not direct and it really wasn't going to help me in my career growth. But also I was like, well, what's the plan then? What are we going to do? Get another PR job and another PR job. So at the time I would have been 20, so eight years ago or mm. almost nine years ago. And I was like, I'll get another job, but a fun job to counteract this job. Oh, that's to relieve me the out. stress. Yeah. Okay. You know, it made sense at the time. DJ. <laughs> Oh, well, no. kind of, because okay. I couldn't DJ then. Mm. Um, but all my friends were going out heaps, as you do. And they're like, why don't you start coming out with us? And I was like, I don't want to drink alcohol. I don't want to learn how to drink. And <laughs> yeah. I was the youngest person of my friends to graduate. They had all transitioned into social oh, drinking. So yeah. I would have been binge drinking mentality. <laughs> yeah. But I started going out to these really cool, like internet based club events and you wore cool clothes and like you took photos of your outfits, you put on Tumblr, that was mm, the vibe. Okay. Um, the and the actual <laughs> venue was looking for a door girl. And I was like, this is a fun job, I can be a door girl. Mm, okay. So I applied to be a door girl and I got the job working for the venue. Did you apply for that? Yeah. Okay. Like fully on seek type vibe. On seek? What? Yeah. To be a door girl? Yeah. I, remember, I feel like that. now you, it's just chit chat, chit chat. Yeah. yeah. But at the time it was like an application to oh, be wow. a door girl. Very official. Yeah. Very. Yeah. So like you, your, you know, rest, superannuation, <laughs> all of Not that. Rest. Real rest. 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 Yeah. For a door girl. Yeah. Okay. I thought that was cash in hand kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It should be. Yeah. yeah. And it probably mostly is. is. Yeah. yeah. So I would sit on the street i mean not on the street but on the, <laughs> side, of, on the side of the road and and let people into the club but the issue is this kind of club um was open from maybe about seven onwards but you didn't really start taking money if any until about like 12 years right yeah oh, realistically it's like free entry after yeah. nine and whatever um and then it just, there wasn't a lot to do. It was a very social job. I was talking to the security guards, just waving people in. Mm. And there was this one, the event that I had went to that had introduced me to this club. I was like, I want to be up there with you guys. Mm. And they were like, well, we're contractors. We don't actually work here. We just hire out this space. And so I was like, I need to go talk to the owners to figure out how I can work closely with these guys. Because I don't want to work here generally. And they're like, what are you talking about? We need a door girl. You want to be a door girl? Mm. Anyway, a few months later, I made friends with the promoters of the venue that I went to. And I said, oh, I know how to do PR and I know how to do business management. Can I help you as a oh, friend and like give that. you some advice? Because it did make going to work easier because mm. that wasn't my only focus, focus my only yeah. point of interest. Yeah, and it was nice to be able to use those skills mm. in a way that I was actually seeing if I did have those skills. Mm. Um, 
And so we would write these press releases and make guest lists and it was really fun. And then at one point in time, I said, isn't it strange how you go out of your way to hire and pay for DJs from nine to midnight, but nobody comes till midnight (laughs) or 12.30. So why don't you just do it, you know, as, and because the promoters, there were so many of them, they were friends in a Mm. friend group. Instead of bringing someone out and, um, getting them excited to play to people who won't be there. You guys just, just save yourself it. some money yeah. and DJ. And they're like, oh, we don't really want to do that. And I was like, can I do it? And they're like, can you DJ? And I was like, no. <laughs> how I hard can it be? <laughs> That's what I really thought. And so then what I did was I told the venue that on the days that this club was going to be on, I'm going to be DJing up there. Oh, so do you okay. mind if I do a set and then come back down? And they're like, okay, cool, whatever. And then I said, also... Would it be okay if I came in on weekdays when the club wasn't open to use the decks to learn how to, to DJ? Practice. And they said, okay. Your determination is on me. It's yeah. crazy. Your own job. I feel Literally. like you're a go-getter. Yeah. 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 And honestly, just my mum's daughter. Because yeah. my mum yeah. is the type of person yeah. who would just be like, why don't you just ask? Mm. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, okay, I guess I could do that. But it also it felt like it made sense to me. But I also feel like that is adolescent hubris you know feeling really overconfident yeah. and not really being self-aware that it's not appropriate that, to ask. in this, in this a, context yeah. though it yeah. felt like i didn't know i wasn't self-aware enough to know that it probably wasn't in a, wasn't appropriate yeah to, you were to like con- yeah. contract myself <laughs> to another person in the venue oh like it doesn't actually make sense yeah but so I would go in and I would practice and then I would, I bought a little controller, which is a small DJ deck to practice at home. My brother Maxwell makes music. So oh, yeah. mm. he tried to teach me, but I don't like being taught. So <laughs> I said, don't worry Still. about it. Oh, he tried to teach me how to drive. It didn't work. He tried to teach me how to DJ. It didn't work. Uh, so I just kept practicing, but I soon found out. And obviously I would then play at the venue at this event. And so it was this really circular experience and everything just lined up really well. Oh. But I soon found out it didn't matter that I couldn't DJ at the time. Cause yes, on a technicality, I could press the button. Is it I was hard? Say, yeah. Is like it actually how did, hard? did you use YouTube? Like wh- how uh, else did you figure it out? Like even I used to- YouTube. Okay. Mm. So I, the, the technique is simple. Yeah. It's like, once you know how to drive a car, you're like, mm. this is kind of simple, Yeah. but it's not the technique that makes a good DJ. Yeah. Reading the room. It's reading the room. It's yeah, self-awareness. Definitely. It's almost psychology. It's anthropology. It's like, you know, understanding understanding the function of a DJ, which people don't understand. Mm. Venues hire DJs to get people in, mm. but also to get them to drink and go smoke mm. and, and circle around the room and use the amenities. And so when you have a really indulgent DJ who ruins the vibe, the girlies <laughs> say, we're going to go. Yeah, We're not having fun anymore. Mm. Or when the DJ is playing too many good songs at 8 p.m. and they run oh. out... Mm. Well, then that's not a good vibe. And so before you know it, you're just making these judgment calls by assessing the situation like a detective and you're actually not really using your skills. A lot of great DJs technically don't really sound good, but you forgive them because they play the fun music, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah, Like, ah, that was clunky, but oh, I love this song. (laughs) (laughs) And so that ended up being DJing. And because it was an odd time because this, I would have been 20 at this point and Instagram was still in its very... Um, smoke and mirrors phase. So you'd find a pretty pink wall to take a photo. Yeah, you'd set up that the same shot. one filter. Exactly yeah. the same filter, and so nobody cared that I was actually DJing, mm. but they cared that I looked cool and my friends looked cool. And if I DJ at this club, that my friends mm. would come, come and then yeah. we would take photos, mm. and other people would come, and so it was a social thing very quickly. Yeah. Um. And then all of a sudden I was DJing 25 hours a week on top of my full-time job. But was that strategic though? Because No, because no, I was like, I'm not going to be a DJ. It's not a real job. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you call yourself a retired DJ? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm like, I don't want to, that wasn't the plan. Yeah. I just needed a way to escape. To escape yeah. with yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Job. massive. It was yeah. so much. But I was also, I am very money-minded. Mm. And in my head, it's a simple job at the time. Well, when that first, um, club wasn't paying me but very soon after 75 bucks an hour i said okay mm. i'll dj everywhere <laughs> <laughs> and you know when you're djing a a, cl- uh, a bar on a wednesday from seven to ten there's no expectation nobody's yeah. there nobody's yeah. bothered yeah, yeah. yeah. and Perfect. so i remember talking to my older brother maxwell and he had said uh are you gonna do it full time are you gonna take it seriously and i was like no 
like I don't want to do that. He said, why not? I said, well, what, what if I become a full-time DJ <laughs> and then it doesn't work out? I've got to go back to doing, this work that I'm yeah. doing now. I just need to get used to the work I'm doing now so I don't, I'm not constantly in the state of escapism. Mm. Sorry, so this was whilst you were still at the PR? Yeah. Doing and so if they didn't that think that I was tapped in socializing oh then, gosh. I was even more that tapped like out really socializing. Yeah. But I think you would have been a good DJ. I was, I'm a great DJ. Yeah. Oh, you know, I, yeah. Sorry. Cause you're saying like you, DJs are meant to like bring aura and stuff like that. Yeah. I feel yeah. like I'm a great fine. DJ, but <laughs> I like how you bigged up to yourself. Yeah, yeah but like it, it. it's, sorry, what you saying? No, I, I don't think you would remember, but me and my friend Jeff walked up to you after the Scissor show in 2018. Period. And, and we were like, 2018. Yeah. <laughs> Five and years. we were like, we loved your set and your makeup's amazing. You're like, thank you. <laughs> It was like, like outside of Enmore Theatre. Yeah. yeah. So no, you were a great DJ. Yeah. I can attest to that. That's, that's not, easy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm very good at it. And it's, but I don't think it's that enjoyable. Mm. The illusion of it's far more enjoyable than the reality. Mm. So when I was DJing at this time of being 20 and, and um, uh, working this full-time job and not really knowing what direction I was in and then doing that terrible thing when you go to your manager and you say, can I step down to part-time? Four days. And, and then what did you do? Casual days. after. <laughs> yeah. and then, oh, it's not work. Yeah. You know, and then she was like, yeah, you can. And yeah, you can. Because yes. wow. um, she was strategic. She obviously, you know, everyone gossips. They know I'm a DJ. And she's mm. thinking, well, this is interesting for mm. us. Yeah. It's interesting for social and mm. blah, 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 blah. So then eventually I quit. And it didn't go down very well. But I was like, I don't even think I like being here anyway. Not mm. enough to be dealing with a boss who thinks I should be super grateful for working <laughs> in exchange <laughs> for the money you give me. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> you know? It's actually so dumb. Uh, and then after that, I... Oh, okay, so then I was working... Then I was DJing full time. And I was like, okay, so what are we going to do now? Because I'm a DJ. Oh, and the reason why I ended up quitting... So my brother was like, what would make you comfortable to... DJ full, full time. time. And I said, probably, I don't know, having rent, like three months of rent, because I was living outside of home as well. So the idea of quitting my real job to work this fake job, I didn't want it to be stressful. <laughs> fake job. Fake job. <laughs> <laughs> I was I in denial. Full time and yeah. you're like, fake job. <laughs> fake job. And so he was, I was like, if I just, as soon as I have, you know, a solid amount, three months, six months of just rent, not savings, but just rent right. money. Then I think I'll quit or whatever. And then he transferred it to me. Oh, I your brother. brother. This is your brother yeah. like this. Wow. I come from a, I got a good family. Mm. So I was like, I got no excuse now, I'll just quit. Yeah. Oh, then sweet. I was living on a high. I said, what else can I do? I said, I wanna be a TV presenter. So then I, I was approached by a producer who was freelancing for MTV, who wanted to do one of those what do it girls do in a day type of content Mm, pieces. But that fell through because she quit. So then I said, can I have a contact to MTV so I can talk to them? And Mm. they were like, oh, okay. They might not want to do the piece because who's going to produce it. Mm. I said, don't worry about it, babe. (laughs) (laughs) So I emailed them and said, can I, um, I want to be a presenter. Mm. And they said, do you have experience? And I said, no, but I can learn. Not on a technicality, <laughs> but I feel like I could do it. And they yeah. said, well, come in for a screen test. And I think it's because at the time we had compatible needs. They needed, you know, a music oriented, cool looking person. And I'm black I'm a, and I'm a woman. And it reflects mm. really well on this brand that's come from this very American centric mm. blackness yeah. as you know, the, the superior. And so they're like, this is going to be sick. This is going to work perfectly for us. And I liked pop culture. Mm. So when I went there, obviously I wasn't good because being able to articulate your thoughts is not reading off a teleprompter, mm. is not scripting, is not making content, but they still hired me anyway. And at this time I um, had just put in my um, resignation. So even though I'd quit this PR job, I still had yes, four, four weeks to go. Yeah. So now I had to start juggling going to MTV on a Friday and finding a reason to leave the office early after <laughs> I'd resigned. It was messy, but also what are you going to do? Yeah. yeah. So when I was working at MTV the one day a week, they, it was fine. It was a really good way. It was a really humbling and also empowering experience because it really is so easy to hate from outside the club to assume yeah. that, you know, how simple something is or how easy it is to do it when you haven't done it yourself. Um, and so to go there and to learn all these skills and to be, um, kind of left to my own devices, it's your face, it's your brand, 
they're your stories. So you tell them in the way that you want to tell them. And then at the same time, I remember I got approached by FBI radio who said, well, do you want to do a radio show? And, and that's like, just based off you being on MTV. Yeah. yeah. And because the the club that I had promoted at, they also had a radio show. They said, are you going to come with them? I said, no, nah, I don't want to do radio. They said, why not? It's just the same as what you're doing on MTV. I was like, mm, sounds like more work to me. <laughs> but I did it. And so I had a radio show and... This would have brought us to, I don't know the year, but I would have been. Say, with what is this like in two Now years, we're like 21. Three, okay, 21. So, like, so we've got seven more years of this? Yeah, oh, we're just man. getting started. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's, That's why I, I summarise. <laughs> yeah, but, but even when you said summarise, I still thought you would come up with like a definition only because I'm like, you if you're up. getting presented to brands mm. and they ask you that question, what would you say? I say I don't answer it. Oh. I say I do a bunch of things. What do you need me here for? Uh, yeah. Do you know? Like, are you like here that. because I'm an author? Are you yeah. here because I'm an, an award-winning influencer? Are you yeah. here because I'm a DJ, a radio presenter, a podcaster, yeah. a writer, that pigeon a TV you? presenter? It's true because you people are like, well, we want you to host. I don't enjoy hosting. Mm. I've hosted. Mm. I say I'm a host, but I'm not going to take every hosting job. job yeah. I'm a radio presenter, but I don't want to do radio all but the time. But you're allowed to be like... This is true. Yeah. So when people ask, I'm just like, what do you need? And then I'll let you know if I'll do it, as mm. opposed to the title Titles. being permission for mm. me to go and do the job. Interesting. You know? That's and really so if we fast forward, then it's the... I felt like I just used the same mentality again and again and again. Um, but... It was strange because every job felt the same fundamentally. They were all jobs. Mm -hmm. No yeah. one job was wholly fun. You know, DJing, for example, figuring it's the, the strangest feeling being so responsible for the vibe of the party and being so secluded from it. Yeah. Mm. Even when you have your headphones on, like I'm not even listening to what you're listening to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then people are loving it. You're like, yeah. oh, cool. Like I'm here alone. I've got a. I used to do these marathon seven hour sets. Oh my Bondi gosh. Beach seven on hours. the pavilion. That's wow. Cool. And people would be so excited, and I'd be like, you know, I got here at eleven. I'll be here till six. Yeah. Cool. Like, how much deep house can one play? Yeah. <laughs> So long. it's like it's a it's a slog and yeah. it's a fun slog, mm. but and it and it, it's like it made me really start to uh, be mindful of my language because I used to be like you know it's not easy it's like no it actually is easy mm. but it's also difficult work mm. at the same time mm. so it just became a battle because every job had this layer of complexity that I didn't allow myself to see because I think fundamentally life made me a serious person I'm not a serious person by nature. And I didn't really ever comprehend uh, duality as a concept that mm. everything must be balanced. For every good, there is a bad. For every left, there is a right. For every up, there is a down. So when I was seeking these experiences, in my head, they should have only ever been fun, fun. Yeah. right, enjoyable. Yeah. Mm, okay. And so when things didn't go well, I'm like, I got to get a new job. Yeah. <laughs> I got to switch it up. Mm. So then how do you feel now, like, now that you have businesses and there are bad sides to them, how do you manage that? I think because I have a goal now. Okay. Before I didn't have a goal, I was just chasing a feeling mm. of wholeness through capitalism. Mm. <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> a spiritual a tale. <laughs> um, and now I um, want to have enough money to do whatever I want. Yeah, girl, that's, that's what I said. Yeah. And apparently, that takes a lot more money than you think. Yeah, yeah. No, like seriously, I said and a few weeks ago that I was like trying to retire tomorrow, yeah. and I was like. I stopped saying it because I realized it's not possible. Like, I feel like I've worked so hard and got into a point where I think that, yeah, I can chill. But I can't. <laughs> no, it takes more than what you yeah. anticipated. Yeah, initially. way more. And yeah, I think yeah, also yeah. the time, like, in my mind, mm. what rich was to me or, like, what yeah. being successful was to me, that's when I was four. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. That was... And you're years probably years living that We've already now. been there. Yeah. Yeah. So and like, we've regressed. And yes. so like, even that, that money that you think, oh, is a lot, at that time was a lot. Now that money means nothing with this inflation, this, 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 yeah, this. Just for paying tax. You know, yeah. it was, it's um, also, it takes a lot more money than you think and you can't do it alone. 
Facts. And the life of being a freelancer contractor, I'll just keep making money. Money. I'll do it alone. And then you are commodifying your literal self. Not just your skills, but yourself and your mental health and your physical health. And you're like, wait a second. So you get to a point where you actually have to go backwards and say, all this money I thought I had to me, now I give to staff to help me get back to this neutral point. Mm. Do you know? Mm. So like, let's say if I, because you know, even I wish someone had told me, it's like when you get to a certain point, like what is it in Australia? When you make a 180K a year, you get taxed at 45%. Yeah. 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 Right? And so you make 186,000 to 5 million getting yeah. taxed at 45 percent please please let's why didn't you do say that <laughs> like, yeah i know like why didn't you tell me that i wasn't gonna get all my money <laughs> mm. why didn't you say that because now i'm like wait so so like, i got to a point where uh I, I just had done the things i wanted to do so i felt like i had excelled enough in my head to push some things aside, so DJing, right? I say I'm a t- retired DJ because I already DJed for SZA and Doja Cat and Kei and Masego. Mm. Why oh, need to DJ? Enough. Yeah, I don't need to DJ. You've even peaked, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just like, it. like it's enough. Gold link, yeah. like oh, yeah. you've peaked, you're yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. I don't done. need to do it. Yeah, yeah. I will do it for a corporate who's going to pay me pay so, so much yeah. money yeah. and yeah. expect yeah. nothing. Yeah. 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 But on the day to day, I don't want to do that. Yeah. It's like with TV presenting, it's like great. I want to be a TV presenter. To the Australian mainstream public, no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that. I don't want to be. But you've also gotten to the point where you can you make can, those yeah, choices. choices yeah. Right? yeah. Like, unlike, let's say for us, for example, mm. if you gave us something like that, you would be like, oh my gosh, that's an amazing opportunity. When then you would be like, I'm not going to do it. Because yeah. I did it. Yeah. And then yeah. I was like, yeah. oh no, this is crazy. You've done it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if I hadn't done it, I would do it again. Yeah. yeah. So like when yeah. I went on reality TV, I was like, this is sick. Mm. And all my friends were like, I don't think you're going to like it. I'm like, shh. Yeah. <laughs> How was that for yeah, you? Talk about that. Because we had an episode where we talked about Love Island. Yeah. We love a bit of Love Island. And obviously the back the black experience that we have as, you know, women of colour and, you know, the perception that people have of us and the public. So for you, how was Big, like Big Brother. I think you eliminated them the first. Yeah. yeah. How do you think it was? Yeah. <laughs> I just don't know. Mm, I don't really know because I don't know either. I mm, actually yeah. think that like... Australia loves you. So I actually don't know, really. Yeah, yeah that's it like, actually, yeah, yeah, It shocks me true. that you were voted out. Yeah. I couldn't even bring myself to watch it because it's hard for me to even watch black people on reality. I, yeah. 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 So I just was like, I, I don't really want to know. And then when yeah. I found out you were eliminated, I was like, oh, I want to know, but I can't bring myself to watch mm. it anymore. Yeah. It just reminded me that we live in a bubble, a oh, big yeah. bubble, Massive. an international bubble, you know, an interconnected bubble, but a bubble in itself. The experience was strange. I got headhunted and I didn't know they did that. Yeah, for they these do things. that. That's yeah. how they get Love they Island. Want, they want diversity. Yeah. So yeah. Like, yeah. a lot of people in our communities don't go out and apply for this stuff. No. So yes. They have to find you and yeah. ask. And also Big Brother, they had taken a, a hiatus of some sort. So they were coming back and they said, it's new and improved and we're approaching it differently. So in my head, we're going to be sitting around chit-chatting, mm. gossiping, that's the vibe. And they couldn't tell us what the new and improved version would be right. because it hadn't come out yet. And we would tell people, obviously, even if we signed NDAs. So um, it was really, really vague. And, you know, if you've ever been headhunted, not even ever been headhunted, People who work in production are very specific type of manipulative. Mm, you have definitely. to be to do the job yes, well. 100%. Just like if you're going to work in PR, you need to know how to turn on and manipulate social situations. You can't just be here, arms crossed. You know, <laughs> you need to work a room. <laughs> you know, you need to spin a story, tell a tale or something. Mm, so, yeah. you know, when I'm getting headhunted, they're like, you're going to be amazing. We already know you're perfect for this thing. La, 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 la. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that people think that they have this image of me that I think that they don't realize is real. So they were like, you know what we know. I was like, I have really hard boundaries. I'm not going to do what I don't want to do. I don't want to be put in a situation where I'm uncomfortable. Mm. You're not giving me information. I need to make an informed decision. So I can't just sign on to some imaginary show. So there's a lot of friction in that kind of initial process because it was a big investment. So many, um, a psycho, like psychological interviews. They were trying to build character profiles, hey, so many uh, medical things before we even knew that we were going to be on the show. Yeah, wow. So like a producer's calling you to have a two hour conversation and you're like, babes, I don't have time mm. for this. And I know it's like, for example, when they were trying to build this character profile, they would just have a conversation with you and then move into a direction to see that you, if you're going to fit the archetype of what they want you to be. Mm. And so they're like, you know, you're very confrontational. And I was like, no. 
How did they Stuff gather like, that? Yeah, and they were like, well, because on the internet, like, you're always saying things. I'm like, well, I have opinions, <laughs> opinions and I share. Yeah. Yeah. not comfortable. Not comfortable. Oh, you're yeah. Yeah. Um, And they were like, okay, okay, so what's the worst kind of person you can imagine being stuck in a house with? And I was oh. like, probably, really, like, you know, a really, um, you know, those kind of people that just don't know when to quit? Like, can't read a room. Keep pushing, uh, yeah. Okay, keep pushing. They don't know when to quit. You know, they're, they're not sure you heard them, so they say it two times louder. <laughs> um, really attached to views that are inflammatory or wrong, argumentative. Like, I just yeah. can't be bothered. They're like, so what would you do if that person was in the house? Oh, my gosh. I said nothing. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, what, what, you, yeah, what would, would you do? do? Like, what do you be, go on do? the other side of the yeah, room as yeah. them. They're like, okay, what if they confronted you? They wanted you to be the angry You know, I was yeah. like, I don't know. Mm. Like, I just don't think I'd have the energy to do something about it. Mm. What situations would, would you, you confront say? someone? Mm, when it felt worth it. Mm. What would make it worth it? I'm like, well, not in this instance. What are the odds of winning? Yeah. 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 Like Very that. low. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm, like, and I'm already coming in with a profile. So mm. if anything, I'm going to go above and beyond to protect my profile. Yeah. 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 Not sure. going there to be, you know, whatever. And I said, you, like, aren't you also mindful of that? Like, mm. and there were all these clauses about, um, you know, you can't, uh, you got to get off social media. I'm like, well, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, and they're like, yeah. okay, well, you can have a friend post on behalf of you to make it seem like you're still here. Yeah. I said, great, mm. you know. Mm. So it was already, I, I just, just was not the yeah. right fit, yeah. but it was trying to make, what is it, a square peg fit into a round hole. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, what's the worst that could happen? But there was a lot of time off beforehand. So I had to do quarantine, a lockdown for two weeks, and then... Uh, I didn't realize how edited the show was. So I was there for eight days, which gets edited down into an episode. Eight days is actually very long. You know? So, and depending on what the storyline is, but they would say things like, you know, we're here to make storylines. So if you say, you know, if I say I've got a problem with you and I'm in the diary room being like, you know, said this, she did this, blah, blah, blah. And then you never go in to say you have a problem with me. Well, there's no No, storyline. Oh, so it's scrapped. It's, yeah, Yeah. scrapped. What can we we do? So wait, wait, how has the storyline developed? So she... So, so how does she it, know? It it, yeah, but how does she know that she needs to go into the diary? Room well, she things? doesn't. Oh, okay. So it's like because we can't. Not every altercation can be a can story. Be story. Yeah. So it kind of we need it needs to have a beginning, middle, middle, and end. So if I'm like, and then this happened, and this happened, and this happened, and you know, you're there eating, being like, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like okay, now what? Yeah. So you know, I so up until that point, or even being in the house, which 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 was odd as well, I was like, why am I here? Mm. I know why I'm here. I'm an opportunist, but why do you want me <laughs> here? Do you know, like, what role? But I also think, you know, the feedback that I kept getting was, um, uh, and I don't know the way they would explain it. So when you're in the house, it's just a lot of sitting around. around mm. yeah. And it feels like you're on a set, which is worse, because I felt like I was getting, like, work PTSD. I'm mm. like, let me just be at work then. Mm, yeah. It was like, all right, now you can't talk if your mics aren't on. So everyone, you can't talk while we're, we're switching the camera. It's going to take two hours. You can't talk. What the hell and is that? just as well, is there, like, cameramen, like... So around, every wall everything? has, imagine in this room, there's a, uh, the middle section of every wall's cut. So there's like a gap yeah. and there's a plexiglass uh, put there. And then behind the plexiglass is curtains. So there are men, I'm assuming, all in the walls. You can see them adjust their lenses. In mm. addition to the people on the walls, there's all these automatic cameras everywhere, in the bathroom, in the bedroom, when you're changing, yeah. when you're sleeping. So you know you're on a set. The mm. walls are like mm. plywood, not yeah. even plywood, like gyp rock or something. And yeah. even when you watch the ads, you can tell that it's from a perspective, yeah. like a mm. narrow yeah. perspective. Mm. And there's up there and whatever. So it's like, okay, you can't speak. The microphone's off. Okay, the microphone's on. You can speak. The whole thing just felt really... Um, Orchestrated, orchestrated mm-hmm. in a way that you're not really prepared for because we're coming from an old narrative where it's like we just sit and chat and make friends and it was really interesting because you know when i before i went in they said are you going to tell the truth about who you are i said what Sorry, am i going to lie that <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean and though? they said there, well so it could come wife? across like, it could come across in a poor it, poorly you know because um the audience votes up until the end so if people think that you would have an advantage because you have a social profile, it might come across wrong. But won't the, wouldn't the audience have already know who you are? Like most, a lot of people. But they were saying the people are? in the house. Like, would you let them know that you have oh, a social oh, profile? Oh, yeah. And I was like, that is such a weird like I don't know. Team what team it, I don't know. Like, it's like what do you, so say to that? you you get? In, I got into the house and I was just like, 
you know, it's, I just felt like there are people in there that this, uh, this is something they would have wanted to do for their entire mm, life. Yeah. Super fans of the show. And already the process to get there had been so, with so much friction that I didn't want to be there. And it's an uncomfortable place to be knowing that you don't have any privacy. You're with people who are not going to be like-minded for a reason. Mm. Um, people, and just the energy. I've never felt the feeling of being in that space is the equivalent for me of walking through a graveyard and being like, there's bad vibes. Mm. <laughs> because mm. you can feel the energy. People yeah, are course. suspicious. They're, yeah. they're mistrustful. They're operating out of fear, out of shame, out of guilt. Nobody wants to be on the out. Nobody knows how to feel trusted. And it's a game. Yeah, mm. literally. So, for example, I remember we would spend a lot of time just sitting around because there was nothing to do and because you're on rations as well there's nothing oh to eat God. and you're hungry, yeah. and you're hungry. Oh my God. there's an hour of hot water a day to share between 16 oh people so people God. aren't sharing this <laughs> and i just it was such an uncomfortable place to be um and so i would just stay in the kitchen and like pretend i could cook really well yeah. <laughs> To not have conversation. <laughs> oh my god! So when we would sit in a group, all we could do was speculate. And because I'm a thinker, I would be right a lot of the time on what would happen. I would get in trouble from Big Brother. They'd be like, "You need to stop speculating," because it does. Like, you need to stop speculating. It's not good for TV. What were you speculating about? Like things that Big Brother was going to do. Was going to do, okay. or like what we the consequence for not doing something, or what the next challenge would be. Because it kind of is placed out. Like for example, when you go into the house, you're not allowed to bring. Um, anything that you could use to have fun. No notepads, no pens, no games, no music. You can't sing, you can't hum on air. You, what like, you, you can't, can't do. Yeah, no, it's giving that. dictatorship. Yeah. Yeah. So when you get there, like they don't want you, they need you to be present in the game. So if you can mm. go away and do notepads and drawings, you're not going to be present. present yeah. And so um, there was a challenge where Big Brother had said, okay, I'm treating you all. You get to have anything you want. And I said, we've been here for three days. We haven't done anything. Why would they just treat us? Mm. And they were like, no, like, what do you mean? And so we had to go in the diary room and Big Brother would say, what do you want? Anything you want right so do you want pens do you want pencils do you want a roast chicken everybody was roast so chicken. excited because i'm telling days. you like after four days 16 people the rations were like one dozen eggs two kilos of minced meat four cans of chickpeas you know we would have oh we would have two rivita a day one in the morning and then one at night and then if you were lucky you eat your boiled egg and then you'd like eat a little bit you save it i mean you're <laughs> guardian so the boiled egg <laughs> you know <laughs> that one we can, we can so manage, you know but, or like oh. if bread was made you're like oh my god I, i'm gonna get go. <laughs> You, the little left I'm going to have half now I'm going to have half later so you're already deranged what kind of World War 2 ration no, is this and they're not even showing this this is the good stuff oh, this is the good stuff they're not even showing it so by oh the time God. it got to this point people were so weakened they were like no like it, it was I know Stockholm Syndrome as a concept is not real but it was Stockholm Syndrome because yeah. the same person who is depriving uh, you yeah. is the same person you? you want to impress as yeah. well because yeah. if you bear in mind the diary room is your only safe space you can't yeah, be yourself yeah, yeah. out there. Mm. You can't say what you think. So you run there to get, you know, to get, get understanding. Out, yeah. And because every person in the house gets a producer whose job it is to be their big brother or to mm. feed big, big brother words or phrases that you've said to encourage a like-mindedness. Oh. Okay, you sound like you came out all right. But what about the rest of them? Because it just doesn't, mm -mm. it sounds like mm. mental warfare. Yeah, it when people came out, like... Because I was, like, not planning to... I knew some people who were in there. Mm. I, like, I went in because they were also fellow influencers. But we weren't friends, yeah. peers or whatever. People came out wanting to catch up. And they were like, you know, I was betrayed in there. She <laughs> she betrayed me. And no. I kept her safe that whole time. And she didn't even know it. <laughs> like, real loopy, loopy <laughs> stuff. Oh, <laughs> because, of course. Because, of course. Because yeah, you're so... so we so laugh. <laughs> so, <laughs> truly. Too. So when Big Brother's saying, you can have whatever you want, I said, they're probably going to let us have whatever... They're probably going to give it to us and make us destroy it or yeah. something. Lillian, to the diary room. <laughs> you need to stop speculating. You need to stop doing uh. this. So, then when it happens, she's a mole. She's a snitch. Maybe she's an intruder. How does she know that? And then when I'm saying just use your brain, they're kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> if it was that simple. Yeah, yeah, do you know? Yeah. So there's tension. And then... So when they would go around and say, like, what do you do? I'd be like, I just work in media because it's true. And it's like, am I going to get into the da 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 da, -da, -da? Yeah. Um, And so I remember the people, because I wasn't there for the reasons why other people were there, it came across as, like, I wasn't trustworthy. Yeah. Because I, when they were like, come and join my alliance, I was like, I'm like, 
I'm not here to let you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not this because I said one of my um, like when I came out of the house, I said what surprised me most about being in there is how people were willing to be their worst selves with very little incentive or no incentive. Mm. You don't have to be bad in that space. Mm. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to be disruptive. You don't have to be rude. You don't have to be uh, mistrustful. People did it for free. Mm for the illusion of some kind of success. I'm like, that's not fun for me. So when I was in there, because I was operating on this, like I didn't need to speak. I didn't want to socialize. We wouldn't be friends anyway. So I'm not trying to over enthuse the connection. Mm. It didn't come across well. And I was like, that's fair. Mm. And I had this confrontation with one of the guys that I said would be the worst kind of person that I'd want to oh interact with. Mm. Just a really misogynistic, sexist, like homophobic, just, a caricature of himself mm. pretty much like all he would do was you know insinuate that he wanted to get women alone in the bathroom to have his way with them like oh real fucked gosh. things and i'd be like this is your king <laughs> but i think <laughs> because of the environment people really look to a leader or someone who was going to mm. show them what it was to do it well he was like you guys get up everyone like you need to back yourselves and so even though people were didn't like him or were afraid of him. They were empowered by him because I think in some ways, everybody wants to be drawn to the person who's on the winning team. Mm. And when there's no one playing, the only person playing is the winner. I really didn't think reality shows were this serious. That's, no, why, yeah. that's why I can empathize with people on the, on the, the out. Side, yeah. You know, when I see Love Island, be like, how are you gonna fall in love with so-and-so? And I'm mm. like, you know what? Eight days there, mm. it's, it's, it's so stuff. disruptive to be like, damn, I don't even like, anyone here and that's not even like a personality quirk i just don't know you and we've been thrust together in an uncomfortable situation mm -hmm. i don't have housemates for a reason i don't want to see people not shower not clean up after themselves be rude interrupt and i'm seeing it tenfold from 8 a.m yeah. to midnight every day mm -hmm. and then you're like well you just start to sympathize for them and then you're like well they've been through something really hard and then somebody's crying and someone's been confronted and you're like we only have each other and you go through these cycles it's like mm. lord of the flies it's like yeah. well i was your enemy yesterday but that was yesterday and today we got to be together so if romance was involved yeah yeah new that's, level. Level. that's another new level. level trauma the mm. whole thing is so bizarre mm. but now i'm like it, the price that people pay to do reality tv if you're not going to go in there and act foolish, mm. don't even bother. Mm. Yeah. Mm. If you're, yeah. It's a system that yes. needs to work in the way that it works yes. to thrive. Don't go in there. Cause I remember the producers would say to me, you need to stop. Like you need to just be present. I'm yeah. like, but why? Mm. I don't, there's no incentive for me to be present. Like I'm not going to come in here and make it easy for you to manipulate my a story or my identity or whatever. Like when there's a conversation happening, I'm going to be like this. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Lil? I don't know. I can see both sides. Mm. Yeah, they don't, and they don't want that. They don't yeah, want that. They don't want They're like, where no. is the, where is the piano? Yeah, and I'm like, they know that. I left her in Sydney <laughs> where the check was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <literally. laughs> not for this like nominal minimum minimum wage to be yeah. traumatized every day. I'm not doing it. So yeah. how do you feel about oh. like in the spaces that you're in, and especially like Big Brother, mm. being the only black woman or mm. being the oh, only black, black yeah. person? Even in, in PR. Yeah, even or in all the spaces. Yeah. In all spaces. The, 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 the rooms yeah. that you're in, all there. Yeah, as I was saying, I was like, all last, the spaces. What were you talking about last time that you were at? Yeah, when I went to um the women's thing and I, I wasn't happy. Mm. But I saw you and I, I was like, this girl's great. I was like, oh, yeah. Lil is great. She might as well sit there by herself and kick everyone out of the room, like <laughs> kick her panelists out of the room because she's holding the conversation. Mm. But I looked around and I was like... No you said, wait a second. Looks like me. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, how does she feel? Because right now I'm pissed. Well, I think, you know, I've had a, a very different upbringing to you, even though we went to the same church. Like I grew up in Sydney's East. Mm. So that's all, I've always been the only black person in the room. Always. Yeah. You know, and I feel as though everything that I learned about uh, blackness came from before I had access to the internet, came from my mum telling me this is what it would be like. And I'd be like, are you sure? Mm. <laughs> like, how do you know? How do you know? And mm. she's like, D like, you're gonna figure it out eventually, but you can't tell because it's just you. And you've got a lot of favor on you and people like you and they're excited by you. Mm. So you're not seeing it, but you're gonna see it and then you'll know. And then you see it and then you know, mm. right? Mm. I feel like it used to really frustrate me, but I feel like it becomes more frustrating when you let your hope trump the reality of the situation. 
And so even when I get invited to these things, I'm like, you like, so the best way I can explain it is every time I have a conversation with my staff, for example, and they're negotiating the influencer deal, she'll say the same thing, Sully in particular. She'll say, I always know what these clients think. They've mm-hmm. painted a really clear picture of how you'll be exciting to be around relax chill whatever and they have no idea that they're letting their illusion of your clout become more of the reality than who you really Really are are. so when someone tells me to come on a panel that's called goodbye girl boss talking about how we should eradicate the girl boss and i say i think it's ironic that beneficiaries of girl boss are sitting on the stage saying Mm. now that we have have, have gotten what we need let's just stop i'm like you don't see how that's strange yeah you don't see how that's weird yeah Mm. and they're like okay well this is odd because you know aren't you aren't you one of us and i'm like that's what you think and you're forgetting yeah Yeah. you know like because i'm navigating these spaces adjusting my behavior or bulldozing through so now you work for me (laughs) or now i make the rules you now think it's just like it's a chill thing Mm. it's like no you don't see the tinkering that needs to be done so i can be comfortable in this space yeah Mm. and so i don't walk into these spaces expecting like-mindedness or even assuming that I'm there for an intention that matches my own because it's never the way yeah Yeah. it's never the way and I used to really um I used to really get really frustrated about it and then I was like I don't get paid enough to be frustrated yeah need to go in get what I need and dip yeah you're very goal-oriented oriented because you know what you need to be right because I used uh, there was a time especially on social media 2020 2021 2019 it was so emotional and I was like these people don't understand like I am a 2D character on their phone who's meant to entertain them, educate them with no emotional consideration. They don't care. Yeah. And so I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I, I feel like, uh, you know, if we talk about spaces like the one we were at or anything kind of similar, nobody cares about the root of why we should be here. The performance reigns supreme. It's, mm. So with that in mind, I'm like, let me not bear the weight of it. Mm. If we're performing, let's go, let's get it. And do you know what I struggle with? Because I'm so used to being in black spaces mm. and I'm in a bubble, when I got there, and no, then I realized jarring. I was <laughs> yeah, like, so ex- I was like, wow, so you really don't want me here. Like you actually actively made the space for me not to be here. Like I'm only here because I have a connection point. And if it wasn't for that connection point, I wouldn't be here. So then I was just mad. Yeah. And I, first I was upset and I felt really burdened and I was in tears. And then wow. after I was mad. Mm. Yeah, she mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, I was she mad. Was emotional because about it. because mm. I realized that I've I've ensured that my bubble is is maintained is, yeah. and yeah. i don't need to be angry mm. as a right? gift yeah. like i don't yeah. need to be angry but then you take me to another space then i'm like mm-mm. Mm. Mm-mm. yeah it's really disconcerting yeah and so then i was like how is she able to navigate this because i'm watching i'm listening to girls next to me behind me laughing oh my gosh she's amazing <laughs> <laughs> like, legit. Like, yeah. are they hearing though because i part yeah. of what like when i'm engaging on social media and you know i don't know i feel like what I'm saying we're doing performance, it's like the same person you're getting now, I'm going to talk to my boss at radio the same way. I'm like, I'm not doing this mm. adjusting, adjusting, adjusting. Like, I don't have enough time to do that because I tried that once before and we get to the same place. You don't understand, I don't feel understood mm. and then we're here again. Yeah. But in those spaces in particular, even if I said, you know, like I was, when we were talking about this concept of girl boss, I'm like, you think when I talk to a Ghanaian woman about emancipating herself yes, and, you know, and she's, and, and you're here being like, you know, um, pay gap and um, <laughs> can, yeah. can we or can we not grow armpit hair or whatever? Yeah. I'm like, you don't even understand the breadth and depth of the yes. conversation. Yeah. 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 We weren't even exactly. exactly. we're not in the first place. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm not mm-hmm. surprised when everyone bypasses the words and goes for the feeling. Oh, she's so funny. Mm. She's so exciting. And that's great. Like that works well for me because I yeah. can still re- remain true to what I'm saying and how mm. I'm saying it. And if you're feeling... Uh, considered and understood and and warm cool you know and when it doesn't because what was happening before is that I felt as though I was um I was leaving myself behind to try and find the most respectable way to say that you know isn't it ironic that this is a place for all women but like I'm only seeing one type of woman mm-hmm. here yeah. I'm just gonna say white women non-black mm-hmm. women whatever it might be like it's just the words need to come out because it's not being heard anyway yeah yeah, yeah. and I gotta rest Mm, that's yeah. very true. I think a big part of like also visibility is like b- having your identity being like 
taking advantage of. And I guess sometimes you have to take advantage of it as well. Like you can't mm. just be like sit there and be like, I'm really sad about this. But not sometimes, all the well, time. Yeah, all it the wasn't time, until yeah. literally two years ago when I was like, wait, people make more money off me than I make off yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah exactly. But yeah. then other, like, and I was saying, yes, I was complaining, but I was like, you know what? If you're going to put me here, I'm going to use it to my advantage. Yeah, exactly. So when, when it came t- time to do feedback, I said, look, yo, I'm on a podcast and there are a whole bunch of, like, we have a black audience and yeah, I don't see my people one. here. So yeah. I better make sure that, I was like, you better remember my name mm. and I'm reminding you, my name's Gillian. You'll find me after this. Because I was like, you know, and I said it to other women, I was like, if we're here, then maybe this is our opportunity. I don't want to be the person carrying this burden. I really yeah. don't. But if this is where the opportunity is, I'm taking it. I don't freaking care. Because if that means that that's what gets me inside, that's what gets me the opportunity to bring more of my people on board, I'm taking it. Mm. Again, you can't hate from outside the club. Yeah. Like it's so, and this is another thing that really ties me about commentary about any of the industries we operate in, whether it's like media broadly, creative or whatever. It's too much chit chat. You're not in yeah, the room. Yeah, yeah. I need you to get in the room mm. because right now it's just me in the room. Yeah. Mm. And now I'm talking about what, well, they said over here and then they said over here and then you went there, but so-and-so. And I'm like, I'm tired. Mm. I'm tired. I'm compromising my bag, my relationships. And you're here being like, well, I don't want to do it, but I have thoughts. Get in the room, babe. Yeah. Mm. It's like, and it gets frustrating because, you know, it's not even about free game at this point. It's like either you care or you don't. Because sometimes people do, people do discourse for fun. Yeah, <laughs> and true. unless you're with your t- you, unless you're with your inner sanctum, it's not fun. No. Yeah. You know, it's just like I remember. Yeah, and it's for odd things. Like I remember there was that time I don't know 2020 when everyone's like racism is real. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I and everyone's like, found out about you know it. What? Oh. We need more black faces in beauty campaigns. Yeah, mm. and sports campaigns and retail campaigns, and this will be sick. And you know, and so on one end you're like, okay, it's working, and then everyone's like, well then. But like well, you're not even that dark, and so like you know there should have been a darker oh, person, and, yeah. you know, and and, and you're not even that big. There should have been a bigger person. I'm like well, you know what, I'm gonna get my bag. Mm. So if you got a problem with it, find Six, me seven. your fattest yeah. blackest bitch and get her in the room with me. <laughs> because leave me out of it. Yeah, <laughs> leave me out of it. I'm like, are you forgetting that when you look at me, it's like I'm a black owned women owned business. Mm hiring other people it's like this is how change works i'm not just talking about like what i wish we could have done yeah i'm in the room making it it happen join me i Mm. love that perspective because i'm just Mm. like while you were there doing niche i was the Mm -hmm. one making moves do you know what i'm saying yeah you're saying there's not enough black people but then my name's in your mouth Mm. so like there's visibility happening it doesn't happen overnight it's because Mm. constantly i'm clawing my way in these spaces and saying someone's what you you were saying if someone needs to do it i'm gonna do it yeah but i'm not a martyr yeah, yeah. It's, it's too much like yeah. it's too much Be- and you have to look after yourself unfortunately i know that's that's very individualistic but, but it's like, not though it's, it's not, not at it's all not. i'm like you think on this side it's chill mm. no like i'm here like having to 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 baby people and being like so it actually is insensitive when you request that you'd prefer this hair texture on me mm. for this shoot you know, it's okay. It's not great. Okay, so when you refer to um, uh, black people as being like inherently aggressive, do you see how maybe you don't you don't want to have those conversations, and you don't want to have it in the same place you work, in the same place where your employees work, in the mm. same place that you need to make sure. Because I think the other thing that people start to think of is like every time I make a business decision, it's not just like, do I can I be bothered? It's like. I got how many people who need to eat? Yeah. yeah. It's not about like, oh, I couldn't be bothered. If I don't do the work, if I don't make the change, if I don't feel comfortable, then my COO doesn't eat. Then the girls that do marketing for me don't eat. Then their families don't eat. It's like, it's not even about like, oh, you know, like, I just think it's bad because only one black girl is in the campaign. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have the capacity to have this conversation at this point. Yeah. You don't. You don't understand. Mm. Mm. And also, it's not that deep. Mm. You think the people working at... Co- no, you think I go into the retail store talking about your supply chain? <laughs> you think I do that? You think I go into Woolworths talking about... You know how West Farms is, 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 is corrupt? You think I do that? Yeah. No. Because everyone has their place. Mm. Yeah. We're trying to eat, sleep, and enjoy. Mm-hmm. Wow. A word. A word. A <laughs> word. Me knocking down. <laughs> Truly, we're going to Ernst and Young. Hi. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. Speaking on people, you know, having their name in your mouth. Obviously, your visibility 
it renders you to people being over familiar at times. Mm-hmm. And I came across, whilst doing my research, I came across this instance back in 2020 of someone attempting to berate you for not posting about George Floyd enough. Yeah. Oh my and God. like being like, well, why aren't you saying more? Um, and you obviously aptly dragged them. But <laughs> do you still struggle with that? Have you figured out how to be like, relax? Do you know what? Yeah, I still struggle with it, but it's a perspective thing because I feel like, and what you were saying before about individuality and individualizing everything, when you operate in an environment where you make the rules, when you think you have free will and agency and you decide what happens, you forget that people also operate in their bubbles where they feel like they have free will and agency and they can decide what they need to do. So when someone is interacting with me, the person in their 2D phone who says things frequently who responds to requests they're like I'll just put mine in mm. you know and I think you know I'm talking to the imaginary audience they're talking to me yeah they're interacting mm. with me they know me mm. at least they think they do in the same way I think I know my no. favorite podcaster yeah. except I have the self-awareness awareness, <laughs> like no I don't actually yeah. Yeah. at all and they don't mm. and I used to really tire myself trying to individualize the problem Call, respectfully you know using that person and dragging them and saying this is the issue and now I say no boundaries are real I can't interact because it does you know while it may look like on my and I'm dragging them I just empowered a bunch of other people who've been waiting six years for my attention and I've given them the blueprint mm. oh I'll just say something that like gets her attention mm. yeah no so now it's almost like I had to uh, reevaluate why I'm on social media. Mm. I don't do this for fun. Mm-hmm. There's a means to an end. Yeah. So as soon as I get to a point where it's no longer fun or I'm forgetting the goal, I need to park it aside. I really allowed, I didn't take a lot of accountability for the space that I created before and I couldn't really fathom. At one point you're saying, here is a space for discourse, here's a space for conversation or whatever without the, the but. Mm. And if people who already are lacking a significant amount of self-awareness generally Mm. enough to be asking me about dumb things like, is tanning racist? (laughs) Then they're not going to have the breadth and depth to be like, oh, wait, there's more to this that I'm not understanding. (laughs) You know, it's even why I stopped doing um, the podcast Bobo and Flex. So it was it was for a multitude of things. But Mm. the one thing that I wouldn't have known until we did the podcast is. If we have an audience that's 80% Australian, and I can assume 79% of those people are non-black people. You have two black women Mm -hmm. having a very informed conversation about their blackness. Their non-black audience parroting that verbiage because that's how you're learning, right? Mm. They're taking that information. They're soaking it up. They're understanding it through Mm -hmm. our lens. Yeah. So now you have these non-black people being like, talking about misogynoir, like it's coming from the heart. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that doesn't work. Yeah. But how do they know that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because the other podcasts they listen to don't come with that kind of caveat or a disclaimer that, you know, you're being invited to observe, observe not yes. to internalize. Mm, yeah. And so suddenly these closed door conversations, because a lot of them should be closed door, mm. you know, mm. should really uh, a non-black person be hearing us talk deeply about internalized racism? I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really think so. I feel like for where we are as a society, mm-hmm. that's not really helping us, mm. you know? It's like, you know, uh, I would say to my friends, it's like, I'm rooting for everybody black publicly yeah. as well. Like you don't need, I, I don't need to be saying no, 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 or giving people information, closed door information. Ghanaians do this and so-and-so do that. No. Mm. What are Ghanaians like? Happy, jovial people. <laughs> yeah, do what, yeah, that's, that's fair it. because yeah. because for a lot of your audience, they're, you're probably the only black person that they get it access to. Yeah. 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 So if they, so, and I must admit, like if somebody tells us like, or someone comes up to me and says something about flex. I'm just like, huh? Do you really think we're all the same? Like yeah. I get annoyed because I'm just like, but they that do. can't be your only window. No, like yeah. she's not the only black person in the world. But yeah. they're used to them. Yeah. 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 Then it almost makes me look like I'm hating on you. But yeah. I'm just like, no, we're different. I don't, yeah. and you don't freaking understand. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, and no, yeah. Like having a non-black partner and going to his non-black function. Mm. It's like, do you know flex? You're black and you have yeah. a podcast. Uh, but if you say yes, they're like, see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cousins, like, yeah. No, you know, when everyone's so like, um, if I 
if someone would be like, oh, you know, like, I saw Mano Crooks do something. Do you know him? Like, well, yeah. They're like, fuck yeah, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> All black people know each other. I'm like, no, it's a specific, like, black in Sydney. Yeah. Ghanaian in Sydney. It's Ghanaian yeah. in Sydney. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. even, like, a broader. Yeah. 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 And you, you, you now you're fumbling over your words. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, you might as well like, stop. I, you, just, yeah. I think I said oh. something to someone like, oh. I used to go to church with folks. Oh my God. I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep my mouth shut because yeah. like, it's not that deep. Like she was a child. I don't she even know, child. know her now. <laughs> like, yeah. I saw her like 15 years ago. Yeah. Like, come on, like calm down. But then to them, it's like, <gasps> and it's tricky. So yeah, the, when I stopped the podcast, I was like, you know, I, I individualized the change that we were doing. If, if we have this conversation yeah. in this public space, then we're really going to affect change. And it's like, well, no, because there's new listeners every day who are not going to listen to the catalogue, who aren't going to understand, who are here to feel closer to you as a concept, not to really decolonize their mind. And realistically, you know, the we didn't build the podcast to be an education space. We did mm. chit-chat. Yeah. Chit-chat, chit-chat. Yeah. Philosophy and psychology through our lens. Yeah. Mm. So suddenly we're deviating from the point and we're empowering a bunch of people who wouldn't have the wherewithal to like even engage with us in a fair space. Mm. We're not even coming together as equals at this point. Mm. So what's this for? It's, it became such a circle jerk. I was like, I'm tired mm. and I'm like empowering you in a way that's annoying me. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Interesting. Damn. <laughs> just, just too much yeah, to just take a lot. in. Like, well, we don't really have you for much longer. I know, madam, booked and busy. We I know. Know. Yeah. respect your time, but this wouldn't be a full point tips episode with Flex if we didn't have a Flex card. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> she said. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have a ready? I do. Um, just out of interest, do you have like an all-time favorite? Yes, Flex card? please. Do you? Or like a few? Question? Yeah. Like on the car. Like a, like a car that a you A couple when like, you wrote it, you're like, oh, yeah, this is the one. Is well, you know, I a... only wrote them because I, they came from conversations. Yeah. Mm. So, like, I would have a conversation and put it in my notes. My, I have a favourite to ask when I know that I'm not with people that are self-aware. Ah. Just to see what will happen. <laughs> it's just a simple one because anyone with a brain will answer it correctly. Yes. But it's, um, are you or can you be seen as problematic and how? And a lot of people say no. Do they? I was, just, say? I was just about to say yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Because, yeah. Like, yes. because, because look at what you do for a living. You uh, unpack your thoughts. You like yeah. you scope them out. You are aware of who is influencing you and why you've been influenced and how you've been raised and areas mm. where you can clock that you're wrong, but you don't want to change. You can clock that you're problematic. You don't want to change, mm. and it's fine I mean, because true. you've you're growing into yourself, mm-hmm. not from a performance based lens, from a lived experience. I need to change and live in this body to navigate this world and this is how I'm choosing it. Mm. So we can say, I'm not a martyr. We can say that with our chest because mm. it's like we've moved through the stage, but I will watch people do the mental gymnastics and be like, no, like, cause there- That just sounds like privilege. There, yeah. are, there are people here who are so, it's so racist and oh, so mean. And it, okay. it reminds me that People, and I'm not saying I'm self-aware, but people with an extreme lack of self-awareness are always looking for the imaginary, the imaginary monster, the imaginary racism, the imaginary whatever. And it's like, we're talking real time, yeah. you know, in real life. And it's interesting because I used to um, really, really enjoy having quote unquote deep conversations with mm. people until I realized people just stay answering aspirationally mm. what they would do if they had a better education and a better upbringing and they were in a safe environment. Okay, cool. But so what about in 30 years, yeah. but what for now, now yeah. how are you problematic? Mm. And it's interesting watching people really run away for themselves. I don't care. Mm. You know, like I just, it doesn't bother me at all. I feel like, uh, I have high standards for myself, but when interacting with other people, I'm not here for your rehabilitation. If you say something cooked, like <laughs> it is what it is. If you have, cause this is how people are, yeah. you know, I look at the world we live in. Yeah. You don't know how we got here. Yeah. It's not because you're an altruistic, amazing yes. person. Yeah, hundred yeah. 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 percent. So, so one was shitty a lot somewhere else. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the sooner you know, the better. Yeah. It's yeah. just fun to get to that point, but it's also not fun. Um, having conversations with people who are looking to you as their source of education. No. What do you think? Really? What do you think? Yeah. But thoughts? No. What are your thoughts? Yeah. I don't have any yeah. thoughts anymore. Mm. I'm good. I bet you get that a lot. So yeah. much. Yeah. And I'm like, but what do you think? It's a, uh, 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 uh. Mm. 
oh, I don't want to give a bad answer. You ask me the question. <laughs> I don't care what you think. Just what do you think? Yeah. It doesn't like it's not a big deal. Yeah. Well, I wish this question was as deep as that one. No, it isn't. <laughs> Never. Who is your favorite cancelled artist and why? Oh, Ooh. interesting. Oh. Oh. Azalea Banks. Oh. Is that going to be your Is she cancelled? Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah, okay. Long, long, oh, long time. I, I knew people don't like, like her. No, I she's cool. Yeah, I feel like she's the most cancelled. She's yeah. so cancelled and come back around yeah. uncancelled. Yeah. Full yeah. circle yeah. yeah. cancelled. But yeah. I thought she was just doing chicken sacrifices. No. no. Like where she said crazy. She, she, yeah. And she she's continues out to say crazy yeah. things. No, like, oh. Out of the pants entirely, like yeah. not even out of pocket, like out. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. thought she just like, yeah, no one likes yeah. her. But I think the thing that I like about her is, you know, the more the more I mature, the more I'm like, I'm out of pocket too. Because sometimes when you live in your truth enough and you know what you know, it's not about what's coming out the most in the most comfortable way. Mm. I spent, I was, I remember when I was talking about um, like the menstrual cycle five years ago on my Instagram story, I'm, I'm being called taboo. I said, what was being called taboo? Periods. Which bit of it? Hey. Which bit? You know, and so I'm like, in, at this stage, when I listen to someone like Azalea Banks, without the context of like, she had a hard upbringing and whatever, mm. whatever, whatever. People forgot what it's like to see someone exist who is not performing for your validation. Mm. It's not when people's like, I want to, I want authentic, transparent yeah, people. Yeah, you yeah. got one. That's, yeah. This yeah, is yeah, what it looks yeah, like. Yeah. 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 If right. I would start using yeah. authentic yeah. synonym for nice and comfortable yeah. and good, yeah. that's it. That's it. Yeah. And it's not fun a lot of the time. I'm not advocating everybody go around and act like Azalea. Yeah. No. But it gets to a point where. You know when people say, I like my racist racist? Yes. I yes. want my opinionated people to be opinionated. Yeah, that's true. I want yeah. my thinkers to think. Yeah. yeah. Because unless you go through it, unless you think the thought, put it out, get feedback, adjust, address, you just live in this bubble of where you think all your thoughts are linear and they're always on the path to being correct. And it's just not true. Mm. You know, like when Azalea uh, came to Australia recently and mm. she was saying, uh, I'm really sick of Australians. Like they're constantly pushing boundaries. Uh, they have no respect as a fundamental. They do not like, uh, they, do, they don't have respect. All these people came to watch me play. I've never felt so disrespected. They couldn't fathom. But mm. what we were yeah, she's like you threw things at me. Mm. But but what do you mean? And we really like you. We threw it, like you merch because you were. She's like no, mm. people are bush pigs. <laughs> like, no, no decorum. Yeah. No, oh. none. She's like, you think because you paid to be here yeah, that you yeah, can now just throw yeah. things at me? Mm. Everyone's like, she's got an attitude. I'm like, you probably haven't seen her angry yet. Yeah. No, I yeah. always say the yeah. internet's yeah. never seen me angry. I'm like, you're lucky. <laughs> you're lucky. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. Who's goodness. yours? I think I'd pick Kanye. Yeah, I was going to oh. say, yeah, mine's definitely Kanye. What do you like about him? Or like, why is he your favourite? He's not my favourite. but Favourite cancelled artist. Favourite cancelled artist. I think... Honestly, I just think he's brilliant. I yeah, really believe I that he's brilliant. That. If you strip away all the nonsense and just after the, watching his documentary, just going deeper and seeing a different angle of mm. Kanye, you can't even deny Kanye with brilliant. a bit more context. Like, yes. like yeah. understanding, yeah. His, you know, hustle, like, yeah. how he just pushed self mm. how he makes yeah. beats. Like mm. he, he really believed in himself. Like he was just the producer and he really felt like he could rap. Mm. And you know what? When you think about it, he actually can't. <laughs> no, he can't. he's not that great. Yeah. Yeah. Not, it's so not funny when you I say like when you strip away all of the other stuff because I think that a lot of what we're missing is that we've added on too much stuff. Mm. Yeah. You stripped yeah. a bit yeah. away. Yeah, exactly. yeah. You know, if you started to say the things that were living in the group chat, <laughs> yeah. like, I'm kind of funny too. Yeah. Like, I'm kind of funky with it. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. And I, I, but you know, I feel like, and I was speaking about it outside that I. feel you know, we're not even in a state where respectability politics is winning that much because the world is a lawless place, yeah. mm. but not even for a purpose. Mm. You know, I would, I would much rather have even more out of pocket stuff happen if it was for a purpose. Yes, there's yeah. no purpose driven yeah. people yeah. justifying why they're moving through the world in this way. Mm. So when, pe when people come to me, they're like, "What's your goal? To make money and to stop being around you?" To stop being around <laughs> you. With Girl strangers oh, to stop having to have Seriously, my yeah. bag be so tied, tied to in. making someone laugh, yeah. be comfortable. Mm. I want to be shut away, mm -hmm. right? Mm. But that's not for everybody. Are you yeah. an introvert? Would you say? Uh, I feel like I'm definitely, uh, I'm more of an introvert, but 
because I always say because I commodified myself, mm. I developed extroversion mm. as a skill, yeah. and because I work my work is me, then I've become extroverted. That right. makes sense because I've actually always thought of you as quiet. Yeah. I so am even quiet. when I found out you were DJ, I was like, how does this work? Because Lil doesn't seem like somebody who's like out there. And like, I wasn't. I'm like headphones yeah. on, tap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like I'm introverted at my core. Yes. But that doesn't serve the purpose now. Yes. Like we just need to get through it and get, get on. Okay. I have another question. Mm. Things that you talk about, we would say growing up taboo. Oh my gosh, yes. You talk about it so comfortably. Mm. Half of us freak out. Yeah. yeah. Anything in particular? You know. I think for me, I was talking to my Do you mom. want to write down the word? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, Because I was talking to my mum, and when we started this podcast, you know, she's like, oh, wow, you guys do so well. I was like, yeah. She's like, oh, I saw Lillian on Brass and Tins. I'm like, yeah, yeah, she's doing so well, you know. She's like doing so (laughs) She's doing so well. She's everywhere. It's so good. And she's like, oh, she's done so well. I'm like, you know what, mum? To be honest, I think that... If she was like more within our community, yeah. I don't know whether she, that yeah. trajectory would have been the same. fact. Like as, she wouldn't be yeah. where she is now. And yeah. mom was like, oh, yes, Ghana for the... Oh, sorry. Oh, she's like, oh Ghanians. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I yeah. get it. She actually understood. And, yeah. Oh, and, do you know what? and do you know what? Yeah. Someone, was, how, someone was like, oh, I find her so weird. And I said, no, you're just very conservative yeah. and oh, yeah. too much for you. Mm. And that's why you think it's weird. Like to me, I'm just like, it's her own. She can do whatever. And yeah. I'm happy that she's getting it back. But this person was like, I don't like it. And I was like, nah, it's because it's different from me. Yeah, 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 wrong way. How can someone like me be doing something that I could never dream, dream of doing? Yeah. No, that's, that's and exactly like, how do they have to yeah. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah. And it's like, you're, it's like, it's so jail sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's jail. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like even like my mum is in this era of like, why the F did I let these people dictate what I can what and can't do? Like, it's so jail. Like, and I feel like you're so not in jail. Those both ways. Whenever I was talking about it in therapy, I was getting really frustrated. I was like, I really hate hate that people um, want me to advocate for them. Mm. I really hate it. And he, he was like, why? Um, and I was like, because I wish I didn't have to do it for myself. Yeah. Like, I wish I could just go around expecting somebody else to speak, to for, speak me, for me, you. protect yeah. me, yeah. you know, make sure I'm safe, fed, watered. And I resent that I have to and they don't have to. Mm. So it's interesting when you get to that point yourself and you're like, oh, it's not fair. Mm. But um, yeah, but it's different because like, I can see the way that like, I'm in my family in my family unit like i am different my my family isn't like me mm. i think they're not if we're going to say traditionally ghanaian conservative my family just isn't that but compared to non ghanaians it's like whoa so like your brother wanted to be a minister and your mum goes to church every week and whatever whatever um but i set a boundary really early on before i even knew what boundaries were mm. and even when i didn't know myself and I don't know myself now, I still have a strong sense of self. self mm. yeah. I constantly choose, choose, choose. And I think that I, there were so many opportunities when I was younger when my mom was like, you can't do that. And I was like, okay, so I'm not listening. Mm. Mm. But I wasn't rebellious in like a drug taking delinquent <laughs> way. It yeah, was yeah. like, she was like, you gotta come to church. And I'm like, no, I don't want to go. I'm going to work. I'm like, what are we doing here? Mm. It's like, people are going to church. I don't see them with a close relationship with God. It's like, you're yeah. going there to gossip and sell food. Like, yeah. or eat food out of your trunk. and so yeah. she was like Seriously. she was like well you don't she's like i'm like i still have my relationship with god even today but i'm like, I'm not going to that environment why is that environment it needs to be the conduit to my experience does right? she still not get it or she she gets around? it now my mom, no, she gets it now the thing is would. the thing that yeah. i really respect my mom for doing is because I, sh- I think she could tell very early on that she didn't want to do to me what was done to her. Mm. So she recognizes that she can be trapped in this rigid thinking because yeah. she's still anchored to people who have rigid thinking. Yes. yes. Yeah. Right? But she's like, yeah. you know, you don't want to do what's been done to you. And she's taken so much accountability and tried so hard in small ways and big ways. You mm. know, she sees us using emojis when we're 12 and 13. Oh, what, what does that mean? You know, how else do, what else can I say? And how else do I write that? And, mm. you know, when um, she was trying to communicate with us, like she speaks really great English because she tries, mm. you know, she's like, well, how do we do this? And, you know, so what do you do and why do you do it? And what does that mean? And, and so on and so forth. She makes an attempt, but I think that, um, just in my family dynamic, I used to say to my brothers, you care if mum doesn't like you or 
people don't like you and I don't care in the same way. Obviously, I want to be liked, but mm. not to a debilitating point. Yeah. Mm. And the thing that people do when they um, when they leave themselves behind, where they kind of like suppress their needs for this imaginary person who's going to fulfill them, I don't have that. Mm. And I also felt like fundamentally everybody has to do it that way why do you need me there as well mm. like you all go to this place but like you don't really know each other you don't really like each other whatever why do i have to do it as well mm. why can't you guys just do it and then let me know how it goes <laughs> um that's very enlightened like yeah well to, to have that kind of thinking at a young age but it also i i feel like i had that thinking um and my reality started validating that thinking right. as well mm. do you know because still like you talk about the over familiar thing every time people from uh like back in the days like oh my god i knew i'm like but you didn't you, you didn't, didn't talk to me. me i saw you yeah, yeah, you, yeah, saw yeah. Me. yeah. you interacted with my periphery but yeah. you didn't know me you didn't yeah. try uh, and similarly you know i think um i it's interesting because this idea of agency even when i didn't have agency i felt agency wow do you know and i maybe i chalk that up to my mom because she you know I think physically I was raised maybe in a very similar way to you were like mm. these strict rules and guidelines and you can't do this. And why don't you go be a nurse and la la la. And like, mm. you're going to do this and study Even fashion. Even nursing has entered. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> all all okay. that same stuff. Right. Mm. But the mentality, my mom really instilled a good mentality. She was like, you're special because you're my daughter. I trust you. Very I respect you. That's yeah. Very literally. Mm. Even the idea of being special. Yeah. Mm. Why like do you that's, think yeah. that way? Why don't you talk to me? You know, she encouraged this way of me respecting what I thought and standing on it. So, like, you don't want to eat the food I'm making. Why not? How are you going to eat? You know, you need a job to get food. Okay, I'm going to get a job. Okay, cool. Mm. And that's where And so I well. think at one point it was like friction, you know. Yeah. It's like, you don't want to, you don't want to. Okay. Yeah. And I think when she said, go and do this, it was a threat. You know, okay, so if you want this, you need to go and work. Okay, I'll get a job. Yeah. If, you know, if you want to get tattoos, you need to move out. Okay, I'll move out. Mm. and then you get to a point where it's like okay she's like okay you so what are you doing for work i'm like i'm gonna be a dj <laughs> <laughs> and she was like okay does mum fully understand what you do now do you mm. think if she had to explain it to someone how would she explain it? no i don't think she gets it but, but as long as you can look after yourself she's yeah good, yeah and i think she's more concerned i feel like she thought the lifestyle would be um a disruptor to the relationship because mm. she's like i'm seeing the streets and like Mm. you know do djs have good relationships with their parents you know so <laughs> I, think, I think by nature i can be like quite a very insular person so mm. i think she was just scared that i was gonna pick up these things, things that would draw okay, her, me further right. away from her right. but now we're really close and she gets as much as she needs to because i don't think my friends could explain what i do let alone my mom being like she does this and this and this mm. But she's also experienced it. So she'll go to the shops and be like, oh my goodness. Like, she's mm. like, I'm trying to buy this for my daughter. And then she'll show them a photo. Oh my gosh, you, that's Flex. She'll be like, oh my oh, God, you know her. So, mm. so it's cute in that way. But my mum put put in a lot of effort and she's like consistently in effort I wouldn't even put into if I had lived the life that she had lived already the kind of mental gymnastics she needs to do to even yeah. live in Australia yeah being a divorced woman where she was still having to go to church raise these children yeah. the side eyes like I would not do what she does mm. in the way that she's done it mm. and then have to overcome that to then raise children in such a progressive way that they can be empowered in a way yeah. that I can't even take credit for half the time mm. Mm. It's like in retrospect, I'm like, yeah, that does make sense, actually. Like I tell this story of where um, I really wanted to get braces because everyone got braces. Mm. But she was like, why? Everybody in Ghana, like most people in Ghana have gaps in their teeth. Yeah, it's very yeah, normal. It's yeah, 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 she's like, it's yeah, pretty, it's well. nice. And I was like, no, you're just saying that. <laughs> <laughs> you're just say that. And she's like, you think I lie when I say you're beautiful? I'm like, probably. Uh. <laughs> she's like, why would I lie to you? She's mm -hmm. like, I don't lie to you. And it's true. Like my mom is a really open person. She doesn't lie to me. She might say, I can't tell you the full story, but she doesn't mm. lie to me. Mm. So I remember one day she goes to the dentist, she gets a gap drilled into her teeth and she's like, see? What? Wow. The people no are raised way. by my mom. I was like, see, if my mom did that when I was nine, ten. Oh, so you're not joking. Yeah, I'm like, she's built different. Wow. But she, she does it with E. She didn't go and parade and, and come back. She's like, I'm just telling you. Your mom is very graceful. So, yeah. exactly. She's a graceful, graceful woman. Mm -hmm. So, I feel like in a similar way, when I'm just doing these things or when I'm saying, like, I, why do I need to say the whole job title? It's not a way where I'm like, I'm shy. Yeah. Yeah. But I just do. Yeah. We don't need to talk about it. We just do it.
but I wouldn't, and I feel like uh, this um, issue of commodifying self is now I'm reverse engineering. Mm. I don't want to be a full time talker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I loved not speaking when yeah. I was younger, <laughs> <laughs> but like you're you're at the point where you can now reverse. Yeah, yeah. no, I understand that. Yeah, so it's like yeah, I want to go back to just like living in my books and my games and like talking when I was spoken to. Mm. I was seeing in Ghana when <laughs> the snaps that you posted, you literally just every day you were just journaling. Yeah, vibing. Doing, How doing was it? After yeah. fantastic. So I love Ghana. I go every year. I've been every year since I was like twenty four or okay. something mm. maybe twice a year sometimes like last year i went twice the year before i went twice and it's interesting going alone very yeah. like when yeah. i went recently i went um like my all my family was gonna go so we just happened to be going at the same time no. and mm. then we're like i guess we'll hang out and then it was like a family, <laughs> it was like a family holiday which was yeah. fun but you know seeing it from a different perspective and being like damn this is where i'm from yeah. Mm. And then going there and I'm expecting to see doppelgangers. I'm like, I don't really even look like anybody here. And then mm. people don't recognize me as being Ghanaian, not even by facial structure. Really? Which at first, me too. Yeah. yeah. At first I was like, this is hurtful. Mm. You know, I go to the airport and they'd look at my last name and be like, you're Ghanaian? Ghanaian? What are they yeah. looking yeah. They'd yeah. be like, I don't know. Amer- American? Uh. Okay. But I'm like, you can't even see past you could, like, features. They're like, no, now that I know, I can't really see it. And really? both your parents, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm actually like, shocked by yeah, that. I'm yeah. from here. <laughs> <laughs> and then like people like features. I think so too. You do. But um but everything's confusing for Ghanaians. It's like, oh my god, do you do you believe in Jesus? And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> this is a Jesus these That's are Jesus so based tatties, oh, babe. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's interesting to go because I feel a bit like a um it kind of reminds me of DJing in a bit where I'm like, I'm, I'm meant to be in it. Like I'm from here and mm. this is my party, but mm. I'm kind of experiencing it. Like I've got then, a ticket yeah. mm. entry for a little bit and I've got to go. <laughs> mm. It kind of is like that. It is as like comfortable that. as I think I feel, someone's always waiting to say, well, where are you really from? And why are you here? And, and you, you, you're going to stay in that area? You know, you don't want to stay in the city. You don't want to stay. And it's mm. like, I mean, mm. it. And besides you not looking Ghanaian already, the moment you get there, they know no, that you're you're com- you've come yeah. from somewhere else. Mm. Like it's like a little, like smell it. On yeah, you. yeah. It's yeah. just an aura about, about yeah. us. But yeah, it's so cool. Like, just so expensive. Oh it's so interesting seeing inflation happen. <laughs> yeah, it's every year. It's I remember just got I more stayed, expensive. Um, I took my best friend last year. I was like, you should come see it. To go. Yeah. Oh, wow. I was like, you should see it. It would be cool. Um, but she had a hard time because she got her anti-malaria pills made her sick. Oh. Yeah. Damn. Um, sucks. Yeah. You know, but you got to do what you got to do. Uh, but so I took her there and it was interesting to see it through her eyes because it's like, have you been to Bali? Yeah. yeah. When you yeah. go to Bali and you're like, it's, it's not cheap, cheap. No. no it's not expensive. Yeah. You're not, but it, I think it's cheap. Well, in the sense, like, if you're going to go to West, like, let's go, you're going to go to a Western place. I'm still going to pay 15 bucks for avocado toast. Mm. Like, it's not $2. Yeah, it's not whatever. So, so mm. when I, um, I was, uh, and I also use, I don't know where you stay in Ghana, but I wasn't staying with family. So I'm interacting with hospitality. Yeah. Commerce. yeah. Mm. So I'm looking on booking.com yeah. places to stay. Oh, I'm like, no, 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 that's your first mistake. Wait a second. Yeah. yeah. Why are we doing do that? <laughs> but I'm going to do that yeah. because even now, like I'm not going to stay in some randoms Airbnb. So mm. why do I think that I feel so safe and comfortable to go stay in some random lodging in Ghana? Right. Mm. Um, but that's when I'm in Accra anyway. But I was like, you know, if we're looking, if I'm seeing $150 a night, $200 a night, yeah. I'm like, this is and pricey. And it looks like somebody's house. You know, I went yeah. and got a, a manicure just when I was there recently. I was like, let me just get my acrylics fixed up. <laughs> that was 90 Australian dollars. Was it even Whoa. done properly? No. No, exactly. Not. Yeah. The pedicure is perfect though. Yeah, the pedicure is really? really? up. Yeah, yeah. Go They're oh, getting the skin. Time yeah. Getting yeah. skin off. Skin, They've been, right. you know, cut all your skin yeah. off. Like, yeah, why well, I'm, I'm bleeding every time I leave. Literally. Literally. Like, every <laughs> time. Hard feet out there. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that's exactly. That's exactly right. That's so exactly they exactly know what they're doing. Yeah. They're hard as fuck. That's And even like, because I'm Ethiopian and my mom, well, some she went, she was bringing like toasters with her kettles because mm. she's like yeah that costs like 200 australian out there yeah i'm um, just not, like that place is not cheap. but even Co- going, yeah. going to and I, it's not because i feel like when i go to ghana i'm not trying to assimilate into a lifestyle mm. for like 
I don't know, for role play. Mm. Like, I'm not just going to be like, you know, I'm just going to eat every meal from the side of the road. <laughs> yeah. I want to sit down. I, I want to sit down. Yeah. And if, you, if there's a Chinese restaurant, I want to suss it out. And then, you know, buying a meal for the whole family. And then suddenly I'm like, okay, that was 80 bucks. It's very expensive. So it's not, it's, it's not like, you're not using coins and going. Like, mm. money is leaving. Mm. And between 2020 and now, because I went, as soon as we could leave the country, I went to Ghana. Mm. 2020 to now... Yes. Inflation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inflation. Looking Inflation. at how much them. petrol Bruh. is. Yeah. Petrol is a dollar when I had left left Ghana this time, petrol's a dollar seventy a litre. That's a lot. That's, That's expensive crazy. for what crazy. we for what we pay. Pay. That's yeah. how much we're paying now. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was like a dollar seventy? I don't actually know how they're surviving. Yeah. 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 This is what yeah. Yeah. It actually shocks me. me. But it even then you me. see them with stuff that you you're like, I work and I wouldn't couldn't afford Because they live day to day out there. Yeah, they, they just have to enjoy yeah. their time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very weird. People here are living week yeah. to week, and I'm like, yeah. Yeah. is that different? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I look at my family members and they'll be like, we're catching Uber. I was like, my friend, we can't afford Uber. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Uber we're catching today, Uber. Man. And Please like, wait. Like, yeah. like, mm? The everyday Ghanaian is obviously not doing that. Mm, I don't know because my family nah, members are doing they something. can't afford Uber. Uber They're going to be able to afford the trot My One of my family members is always in Uber. I said we're not catching have, Uber. We money. can't afford it. I need to carpool. What is, do we even know what's, what's the class system in Ghana? Because you're saying every day, be like not every day, but I'm like how many classes do I we really have? There's, mm, I don't even know. Because we've yeah. got like politician rich. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Corrupt politician rich. Yeah. And then, then we have, we have, we have a people, middle, we have a fintech we startup have a, expert. I, have a <laughs> I love that. That's so true. Oh, yeah. there is I think some, we do. We do have a middle I think class. Our middle class is quite bulky, but yeah. obviously but I think it's not. Yeah. 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 like fake yeah. middle class because Ethiopia is very, yeah. very much a fake middle class. I don't class. know if you can be fake in Ghana when you because need every, cash. You need to cash buy everything. Yeah. You can't be fake. Like yeah. your house is your house. Yeah. Like you yeah. either eat or you don't. Yeah. And then if you have yeah. a car, you have a car. It means yeah. that you bought that car. You didn't put it on on loan. On loan. So yeah, yeah. It makes it. Yeah, and then when like I remember someone told me they bought land, and I was like. What? That's a lot of money. Like either that I or a guy that, money that yeah. bought land. No, like a we've got to leave room yeah. for that. It's like I forgot people took steroids yeah. in Australia. I was like, that's everyone's getting so jacked. I'm like, yeah. people take steroids. Yeah, and like people out there still like it's the equivalent, I guess. No, mm. yeah, and I don't blame them. <laughs> and I think fraud. I think the east side has just discovered fraud because they're oh, really? uh, in Addis. They're banging out fraud. That's what all uh, these f boys are wearing North Face. I'm mm. like, where do you even locate that in Addis? Yeah, mm. and, and it's like, why do you even need North Face? North Face, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and maybe if it's not traditional fraud, it's fraudulent behavior. Yeah, yeah. It's like scamming someone when you get an opportunity. Yeah, it presents yeah. itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, but actually, eat? someone actually told me you have to because you don't want to get left behind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They said that, yeah if you want which to brings us full circle back to the girl boss conversation. Oh, yeah. like, yeah. Do you know what's so funny? At the end of the conversation, we couldn't even summarize it, but I said all the critiques you have with girl bossing, you have with bosses generally. And you weren't yeah. sitting here doing knock, 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 being like, men in the workplace have created, the system was created by a man, mm. by the patriarchy, mm. and a woman adopted the exact same yeah. system. Yeah. And only now you can see it. So it's similar on the on that other end. I'm thinking in Ghana, it's like, we're obviously immune to it because we're not having to live or work in the way to get what they need to get, mm. right? You're not really stressed when you go home and you're like, what am I gonna eat today? You're like, Uber, mm. Deliveroo, mum will cook me something, whatever. So it's interesting, like the privilege of not even having to comprehend yeah, how somebody true. could. Cause we look, how many brains in the room? We're like, maybe they just saw it. Wait, listen to us. Hmm. <laughs> no. It's too no. much. It's too but true. honestly, because of how much it's changing every year, mm. I'm like, you can't, it's either people need to start figuring out how you're making your, your full-time move there yeah. or you won't be able to go. Yeah. Yeah. Or you got to get your mum to start building, the, your mum and dad to start building the other houses. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's the boys quarters for us. For the yeah. girls. 100%. Yeah. Because uh, you can't just be, I mean, I don't do hotel all the time. I'm Kamasi, I stay, stay at my mum's house. But yeah. still, I'm like, every day you're spending money. Yeah. So yeah. much money. It's like an but, actual but holiday. Also, pay to play. But mm. also, um, like the booking.com thing, it's not right. Because if you know somebody in Ghana, they can find you. Yeah, but a, I, that's a I hotel that. or something. <laughs> so <laughs> much. Yeah, Every time I talk to me, my brother, that if you know something, it's like, it doesn't suit the way I want to do Inshila life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, wanna do, yeah, I don't want to yeah. do it do you if you know something. Do you go at all in Ghana? Yeah. Mm-mm, oh no. my, you have been coming in Africa? I've been. Okay. I don't want to go. Okay. Okay. That's not, see, but the coming in Ghana's, the DJ thing inside. confused you. Confuses everyone. Mm. No, it doesn't. I can see why like, you wouldn't want to go. Yeah. I like the environment, but mm. the reality of it, I'm like, I don't have that much stamina to dance. It's okay. too loud to speak. And it's speak. super contentious. It's 
also, I remember um, I overheard one of my friend's friends being like, I just hate when foreign girls come here and they try to act poor. I said, <laughs> act poor? I don't want to yeah. go to a club and pay excess to do clubbing in a performative way. Like, why am I getting bottles here when I wouldn't get bottles yeah. in Australia? Yeah. No, but like, you actually need to have a table in Ghana. I don't know if I'm you do. You need to have a good time. Is what you're saying. Yeah, but I don't, don't, don't want to buy the table. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think yeah. you have to buy it. But, but you need. But this no, is what I'm talking it's true about. that you it need the table. So but much. You, I don't think you have to buy it. Just the, the fact that like the the path to the end goal in Ghana is so many steps. I know. Talk yeah, to this person. I went. I asked my mum. I was like, I need to get money changed. I'm mm. thinking we're gonna go to a little <laughs> a little Place, airport. Like, yeah, so yeah, and yeah. so we're Port going zero. to the bikey district. <laughs> <to> talk to <laughs> some guy in front of his store, and she's like, "What's the daily rate?" He's like, "Eleven seven. I'll be right back." <laughs> Next guy, what's the daily rate? Eleven nine. I'll be right back. <laughs> so now I'm on the side of the road looking around. Everyone's revving me, <laughs> and I'm like, "Can I just change five <laughs> hundred? I don't want to do that. Yeah. Just like me to, you That's know. It's normal for them though. Yeah. Like, yeah. Using community saying. connections and, and, and we're it just like, get me, to the, get me there now. <laughs> and it's, yeah. I think it's a better alternative. I was talking to an Uber driver one day. He's like, the thing I hate most about everybody in the West is that they think that money gives them permission to not be human. Mm. So you, you're paying me to drive so you don't want to speak. speak. Yeah. You're paying me to make food so you don't want to speak. You're paying for permission to not treat me like a I human. I agree with that. However... I'm it's tired. also people inside who make that happen because in Ghana, if you've got money, they respect you more. And the moment somebody who's like doesn't have money and they get money, they act like they're a big mm -hmm. boss. They can yeah. teach you anyhow. Da, 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 da. And then also I, what I've also realized is that people who come from countries where they're not treated well, mm. no offense, like sometimes like the UK and stuff like that. When they go to Ghana, they want to be the way we do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so then it's like, it's look at me, I'm yeah. a boss, yeah. I make more than you. And then it becomes this, and it's like, oh my gosh, this and is this never is ending. this is why year. I don't like to go to Ghana in yeah. December. Yeah. 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 And yeah. Essay. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Because it's all of this, in the inner beef, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. And I'm not coming here to do bargain holiday. That's not what I'm here to do. I want to enjoy in a regular way that suit, that makes sense for where we are. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of what's happening does not make sense for where we are. It doesn't match it up. And, that's, and then another thing is, then what I've noticed is that when Aussies go, people are like, oh, you guys are calm. Because, we, yeah, we're very you're, we're you're you're so compared calm. to the rest. Because, <laughs> we're just, because Honestly, us, we just want to yeah. come and do small fun and in, then in, get out. Like, yeah. We're calm. We're, you know, Literally. We're, we're not yeah. cosplayers. Of, as <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very silly. <laughs> and it's, it's like, very silly. It's almost like everybody needs to be like, just pause for one second. All of us just stop talking, stop Literally. thinking. And now, what are we doing? As soon as you step the out. The fact that like, honestly. you know, if I want to go to a club, someone's like, oh, do you know who to talk to? Yeah. To get no, it? Oh my <laughs> you need a membership. Nothing straightforward. Nothing Are straight we forward. New York? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why? It, is, it is like New York now, honestly. And that's not, I don't want to do it's that. So. You could go to New York, you could go to New York. But I'm also kind of like, Props because I think Ghana deserves that. Yeah. I feel like the get balance. your bags. Yeah. We need a bit of balance. balance. Are the people that balance. really need it, you know, even getting the concept the, what of they balance, need to? it like conceptually barely makes sense in practice because it's the idea of like, you know when they talk about like the industrial revolution and the West is kind of like, now let's get on climate change. Now the East can get in, get yeah. in on that. Let's, yeah. let's yeah. really tackle consumption. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before, when it was just you, you don't want to talk about tackling consumption. No, yeah. Now that everyone else gets a piece of the pie, you're like, mm, I don't think I want to do it. Yeah. And yeah. that's almost like how I feel when I go to Ghana. I'm like, it's so hectic. Like, I'm, <laughs> relaxed. I'm like, there's so many tourists here yeah. from the tourists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair. It is hypocritical. I'm like, no sometimes you need to sit down and be like, just observe. observe. Or go yeah. somewhere quiet. That's why I'm like, no more Accra. I can't do it. I know. Mm, it's I'm not gonna lie, I like it. Yeah, because like, you're going for I, a different thing. I like, yeah. like, yeah. I like yeah. buzziness Buzzy. and you know, I'll fight with the Uber driver. I'm trying to wake we, up, yeah, go I'll wash the car. It's she has road. energy to do those 40 yeah. steps yeah. to get to the club. I do. She will actually be like, oh, yeah, give me the, the guy's number. This I don't oh, know no, 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 do you know what? what? Because I, will get, no, I won't have to get the guy's number. That someone will bring someone it to me. So I don't have to do much. You have to call and you're talking to No, 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 I don't have to do much. They'll bring it to me. They'll tell me, they'll tell me, this is this is it. Like, I got you in here. We're going project management. If someone's gonna and help go. and manage from the side, <laughs> I'll be the beneficiary of that. But mm. as soon as you're like, oh, just call it, no. no. Mm. no. Like, it's like, it, it goes it's the two steps. Ways. The steps, like, when I went to Ethiopia, like, we didn't have enough cash on us in the club because we were just buying, 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 and we had no more cash. So we had to leave our phone there as, like, credit. So the next, oh. so the next morning, as, like, like a. 
Next like a hold, like yeah, a hold. Oh, so he left that phone yeah. there and came back with more cash. And yeah. it was like, and then we were on our way to church to do it. It was just like, oh my god, no, what? What? Yes. from church, oh, yeah, let's oh. do that because Ghana, they no, would take it. Why is it? Yeah, why is it? Let's walk somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was, why is everything 18 steps? Yeah, and it's I guess the so sooner hard. we get used to it, the better because we're gonna stay here. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we can't stay here. No, I don't know, you know, because I can't do this madness twenty four seven. Like well, I need structure. Yeah. Like, that's for a period of time. Period of time. Like, I can go for a month and then get me out. Take me to structure. Yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. Take it's sensory overload. Because yeah. I feel yeah. like the long term planning. When I bought my house in Hobart, I was like, "Why Hobart?" I'm like, "Are we gonna do Sydney? Yeah, yeah. yeah. are we gonna we do can't. seven dollars for a six hundred milligram of coke? <laughs> are we gonna yeah. do that? Yeah. Are we doing paying for parking in the city? I'm so desensitized. I leave a parking uh, garage. I'm like, that was only fifty bucks. Huh? I know. Yeah. I know. Like, it doesn't make any sense. No, so so what we, and they're in our head. Ghana and Hobart. What would be your no, idea? No, not living in Ghana. Not full time. Exactly. So what's no, the back and forth. Not full time. But I don't think this needs to be the fourth. <laughs> I need to go somewhere. I need to go to like a cash heavy place okay. that is more culture centric than okay. gentrified, like Panama or something. Okay. Okay. Right. Where it's like we can still assimilate in a way where we're not like, oh my God, this why are people on the street dancing? <laughs> but it's not. Ghana deserves its flowers, you know, like yes. make your dodgy deals with the Chinese government, uh, get your bag, yeah. do what you need to do to mobilize in the way that you think is necessary. But I'm not paying the extra, extra yeah, to, get there. to get there. Getting a Ghana card to do this, to do that. I don't want to do yeah. that. Yeah. But I also feel like I want to keep going and I'd rather pay the 800 from Milan to Ghana. <laughs> not from you know what I paid this year? Yeah. Six, five. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I heard someone told me that they paid six. Seven is the highest I've heard. Six, five. I, no, my dad six. is paying. Se- mm, anyway, I shouldn't be putting his business. My dad is paying a yeah, lot. He's, he's paying yeah. a lot. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's yeah. ridiculous. Fact that we, like, How did even you comprehend. But you need to get out. What do you how else how are you going to get there? Life is for living. Yeah. Yeah. You know That's how many accommodations thing. I've made to make mm. someone else money? Yeah. Didn't go to my friend's no, birthday. No, just because I'm just because of your reason because you didn't want to pay for the hotel stay mm. and all of that. So like, how well, did it you was the cumulative cost? Yeah, right. You're looking taking at the whole me picture. and my friend to Ghana 20k. Yes, ridiculous. <sighs> that's ridiculous. Like that's insane. But that also, what crazy. is the alternative? Not living. Yeah, mm. it's the, it's, life is. And living. that's why I say I need to get clean. To yes, <laughs> yeah. Because you, the way you need to pay to play, it's not a joke. Yeah, you yeah. need to cut corners. All. You're gonna pay for it somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. The one time I cut the corner and got the um South African Airways, my luggage was lost. Oh. But you got it. But I got it seven days. Remember, you got it. I got it. But okay. still, there's something about it's not about the money. Money is fake to me, in the, mm. especially in the way that I make it. It's fake. Mm. I don't live in this structured system where there's a going rate for your output. Yeah. I just sold my life. <laughs> 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 but, you know, the cumulative cost to live, like, I'm happy to, to put money into that. Mm. Yeah. Because, God forbid, I can't even say it. <laughs> but, you know, there are people who spend all this time you know, working towards this imaginary lifestyle they think they're going to live. Oh, and yeah. then what happens? Please, let's not go there. Please, and then what happens? Please, please. please. can we, we not go there? We need to go because we can talk. Yeah, yeah no, 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 because no, now you're talking like, about, oh God, 6.30. Okay, let's do half an hour. Because now yeah, you're talking about something that, that like that. I think about all, all the, the time. time. Get it out, get it out. No, like, I feel like that's what ethnic parents do. Yes. yes. I want to build this big house yes. back home and I'm going to break my back on these shots. Exactly. And I'm like, and especially living in Australia, you can't. And I, I get so frustrated when people tell me like, oh, you should stop traveling because you've done enough travel in your life. Oh, but love, that's, the, love, that's how I live. I know, I know. That's like, very rare. What, <laughs> that's what rare. else are we doing how here? I yeah. like, right? But ethnic parents, they're like, you, you need to Man, think about your life. Like, this is my no, life. Yeah. I really enjoy ethnic it. parents, it's people who are even People, young. enemies of progress. Yeah. yeah. Like, because yeah. I can't, exactly. I'm going to hold and you. And I feel yeah. like you, Why do you want to go anywhere? Because I'm living a life that, in your mind, you didn't think was possible for any of us, mm. right? Which is true because yeah. sometimes I think, wow, I didn't think so either. That, yeah. I'm like, what? What is this? Like, when I was growing up, this is not what I was told that this is the life I could live. Like, mm. all I was told is go to uni, sit there, get married, get a house, you'll be fine, right? Mm. But the the added stuff is a mm. lot. So then what? I'm like. But when I watch other people, I'm like, but that is not living to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not a fair exchange. The At things all. that people have to do for the chance to potentially holiday this year. No, I will burn out. So yeah. I'm guaranteed the holiday. If that's what we just need to be doing. Yeah. Because every day I see a random tragedy. Mm. I know. Every day. It's a warranted. You're not even you looking You know? For it. And mm. that's yeah. like, wait, so you're saying that I'm just, hold, like, now we're just gambling. 
So I'm going to work for an extended period of time. Hope I don't get sick. Hope I don't get injured. Mm -hmm. Hope I don't get, you know, heartbroken to the point of despair. Mm -hmm. Hope nothing happens. And then maybe I will enjoy. Mm -hmm. And there are only a few things. Like uh, I remember one time a friend of mine was making fun of her parents for getting excited about getting a new car. So that's all they ever do. 10 years, get a new car. That's all they ever do. I'm like, what, what else could they do? Yeah. 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 What else? What else do they have? What other? What other options, options. do they have to generate happiness? Mm. Like you got very Sad. few things. You can buy stuff, but then you got to pay for a bigger house to hold the stuff. Yeah. Mm. And then you can have a kid, but then you got to raise the kid. Mm. You can get married, but then you have to work at a relationship. You can go on a holiday. You got to pay. Like you've got four options of things that are going to make you happy. Mm. You have to rinse it. Yeah. yeah. Rinse it. Like the cost to enjoy life is so high, high. and people don't realize they don't qualify. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's mm. like you haven't even qualified to reach yeah. the base rate for joy. <laughs> yeah. That's so don't true. start resting talking about don't go on the holiday. Don't go on the holiday. Oh, <laughs> just qualify, babe. Yeah. I'm gonna take the holiday. Mm. Um. You know what I'm doing now? I'm taking annual leave. So I do radio. And I'm a contractor, but w- like we get um, allocated annual leave. Yeah, I'm taking it. Where are you going? Why would you not? No, yeah, yeah. yeah. No way. People that afford <laughs> their annual leave, I don't understand. I'm the flesh taking it. Sick, li- even sick leave. I used to be like, why is everyone just? You get sick, you take time off, just work through it. Now I'm like, oh, tickle no. in my throat. throat. Yeah, ring, ring. <laughs> <laughs> like, not if it's ring. for me, yeah. I'll work for. Anything else? I'm like, there's not, there's not. a price big mm-hmm. enough for what's yeah, happening here. So I always say, if you can afford to pay me this, how much do you make off me? And you'll yeah. never know. Mm. You'll never know. But I'm like, the price can we is talk not worth a little it. bit about just how you manage the business side of it all? Because you're mm. very clearly very business minded. But the negotiating, even the balancing, even the making sure that you're not burning out. How do you actually manage it all? Well, I don't manage it well. Okay, that's a good thing to put out. I manage it. Mm, maybe I manage it well, but not efficiently. Okay. okay. That's a better way to put it. Why do you think that? Well, because I burn out constantly. Um, and then I'm like, are you a workaholic? I, yeah. yeah. Mm. But then I get, I do rebellious rest where I'm like, well, I'm not taking any jobs. Mm. So either extreme. Don't I want coins though? Yeah. 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 So I don't know what that point is because I'm not the kind of person, like I don't drink caffeine. I don't need a lot of sleep to function. I just do what needs to be done to get the job done. Mm. And so, and because I don't have a good mind body connection, I'm working on that currently. So I don't know the signals to think about when things aren't going well. I'm just like, we're just going to do it. And then it comes and I'm like, oh. it's and then so now I have the time and say to be like, you know what? And that one job I took and then they were really annoying and then so on, so on, so And then the other thing, and then I start getting bitter and then resentful mm. and I'm like, well, I'm never going to work again. I'm never going to work again. <laughs> it's just not helpful. Yeah. But I think in terms of um, doing it on my own, you know, like, I didn't get, uh, how do I explain it? Doing the job on my own made me more proficient at doing the job. Yeah, and I say okay. that because people look for support a lot. Mm, they yeah. want the friend to give them advice or a manager mm. or someone to lead the way. And some of the most proficient seeming people I've met don't know anything and are leaning on me for support. Mm. And so if we all don't know anything, then I don't need to, I, then I'm going to make the decisions that feel good to me. Mm. But the trickiest thing is working with a team and trying to instill that trust, um, but also not trying to be, um, what's that word? Puppeteering. Mm. Because it's not transferable information. Like this is the fee I'm putting on it because I'm justified that fee. If you ask me, should my peer in the same role get the same fee? No, because I'm better than them. Proven. But then, so everyone's like, well, then how do you pick the price? I made it. This is the price I'm willing to do it for. And I couldn't have said that before. I took what everyone else took until I outworked them and said, this is the price I want for it. And if you can't pay it, then that's my L. Now wait for the next job. It's really tricky as well because especially being a black woman in Australia specifically, the value, like the the cultural and the social value is so much more than someone will ever be willing to pay me to do it. Mm. Because they will rinse and repeat your likeness forever. Yeah. It's the same vein as I, I knew someone. Imagine a company being able to say, I knew, we worked with Flex 10 years ago. Yeah. And because I'm not gonna age, they'll look at <laughs> imagery, it'll look, it'll look recent. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so suddenly I'm like, it's not just, they think it's one transaction because that's what legal is telling them to say. It's the simple transaction and it never is. Yeah. Mm. There's always an added value that someone else is getting. So mm. I'm like, if you're making something, I need to make something. Yeah. 
But it's not about, it's conviction, which I think a lot of people struggle with. They're waiting for confidence before they have conviction. Um, But I think knowledge will help you more than confidence will sometimes. I agree with that. You know, because like, what is confidence going to do for me? Like, I don't want to be chatting with the CEO of the company being like, this is what I'm worth. Mm, I just want to have the knowledge. So Mm. if you come back and say, well, why do you think you're worth that price? We'll bring the CV, number one. <laughs> yeah. And also, why are you hiring me then? Yeah. 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 You come to why me? are you engaging yeah, me exactly. this? Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. it's really important because I sold myself short a lot. In the a lot, stages. a lot, a lot. Yeah. Because yeah. mm. even if I thought, you know, I'm not someone who's like, I'm not, I'm not a people pleaser or whatever, but still, you find yourself doing that dance where you... Um, where you make adjustments in anticipation of someone saying, well, you're not going to be worth that. Mm. Or, you know, I don't really think you're appropriate for it. So you start to go, okay, well, I don't want to have that conversation because it's going to hurt my feelings. I'm just going to like downplay it a little bit or whatever it might be. And sure, like you win in the short term, but you, we're going to have to work for so long. Like yeah. how many times can you keep making these decisions that are not in your favor? Like how many yeah. times before you're like, it's not even worth it anymore? Mm. Especially, and I don't think I would have gotten this way unless I did it in the way that I did it. Because when I used to talk to other, I remember for the first five years of this career, I didn't really talk to anyone about what I was doing. There weren't Mm. any other influencers who were going to tell me like what you were getting paid or what you weren't getting paid. But the one thing that, um, that was really interesting is because back when, you know, in whatever 2018 when i was having conversations on the internet when people were posting acai bowls it wasn't cool then yeah <laughs> people are, are acting like it was always cool popping or whatever or you know building a brand um back when it was happening there was no va- there's no validation for that because it wasn't what was driving the coins it wasn't working for me mm. then people start copying it they start drawing inspiration. Yeah. Mm. Oh, now we have hard conversations and we do this thing and we do whatever. And then now it's popping. And then now I can benefit from it. Mm. And then, so it's like, you do all this hard work of trying to build this brand. And realistically, you are just doing hard work so people can start to commodify off you, which is fine. But now I'm like, let me chill for a bit. Mm. Let me start flipping the switch. I don't want to be the person who's like, here are all my fresh ideas to get no coin recognition validation. Let me just start doing it the way everyone else has been doing it because I can't be here being like, well, they didn't pay me and they didn't do this, but I'm still gonna like slog at it. It's a very interesting thing Mm because as a very like, how do I explain it? Like I used to want to project, I used to want people to be like, you know, we are telling you that you're creative. We're telling you that you're amazing. We're telling you that you're talented. And so, all of the things that I did needed to be vetted by the public. And I was like, I don't even know you people anyway. Mm. So now it's like, all I need to do is know that I like what I'm doing or that I think that I should be paid this or that I, or whatever, and then so on and so forth. And it doesn't always work. Like this is not advice. I don't think anyone should do it that way. Mm. I think you get to this point where what you're offering is worth the value that you place on it. And I think for a lot of people, Simple, but they're fundamentally, yeah. Yeah. you can't Practice. ask for what you want because you're not offering anything that they couldn't get anywhere else. Yeah. Mm. And not every job needs to be that way. Like sometimes it's not that deep, but also um, it's really tricky being exposed to all these narratives that give you, that give you the confidence to think that we're one in the same. Mm. So mm. I feel that way. If I see my peer doing something cool, I'm like, I, should, I can do that too. And it's mm. like, maybe. You know, it's like how everyone thinks podcasting is easy. Yeah. Mm. It's like, mm. you would think that. Yeah. <laughs> you would. And then when you yes. start the podcast and you yeah. can't monetize it and nobody's listening, mm. you yeah. circle back and you say, can I have some tips? <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. So it's like, it's building proficiency, but doing it quickly and efficiently and also not being in denial about the reality of your industry. I was in Ooh. denial for so long. I right. was like, I'm not a token pick. I'm here no. because Merrick brought me here. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually Shut believe up. it some time. Yeah, but I'm still amazing. You, of, yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. But I'm like, how do you, it was token, token, token. And, and then it was like a bell curve when it was like, wait a second. How about you be token and really, really? amazing? Yeah. yeah. But sometimes yeah. I'm like, let me not, because I really burnt myself out of work because I was operating from a place where I'm like, I'm not, like I've got to work better. I've got to work yeah, harder. Like, I actually mm, don't. Mm. I'm going to bring the same energy everyone else is bringing. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then see what that gets me as yeah, well. Yeah. I always tell people I'll never work as hard as I did for the last ten years. I'm not doing that ever again. again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Never. 
Mm. If it takes 20, it's going to take 20. Yeah. I'm not working that hard. That is insane is. behavior. Because I'm mm. looking around, seeing my peers. We're seeing we're seeing the zeros are zeroing. And I'm like, you're not even good. Yeah. yeah. That's what you do. And you're doing half as That's much as what I'm doing. That's part about and it. I'm like, yeah. if that was an option... Because yeah. we do internalize this idea of like we're gonna have to work harder, yes. and it's yeah, true. Yeah. But we to do. A point, don't even allow yourself the peace. Yeah, like, no, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slow it down yeah. too. But sometimes you don't get to that point to be able to have that peace. Mm. Yeah, that's that's what many of us then struggle with. Yeah, and like you don't get to the point like, in, until you get to the point. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> right. When you have the wherewithal to be like, wait, I'm, I need more. Then you get to the point. Yeah. Mm. Not I need more because like they have more. No, just I need no. more because I'm me. Yeah, <laughs> and like there's proof of concept as yeah. opposed to being like it wouldn't it, wouldn't it be cool if so and so and so and so but that's the thing with social media you can't people can't discern between um you know this idea of like you know when you're a kid you see kids playing and let's say let's say we're all four years old in this room and we've all bought our toys to play and i keep grabbing your toy because i'm like they're it's just toys like mm. we're playing you're like no that's my toy we don't know what the concept of ownership is when it's in a shared space and so when someone sees my success they're like mm. i can get that too yeah. on a technicality absolutely mm. but in practice mm. how how does that work mm. and that's like it it's tricky because we're only going to get more and more like bombarded with imagery that tells us you can be anything you want. You can do anything you want. Um, all these exceptions to the rules. Yeah. Clogging up your visibility. Yeah. Right. Like everyone you see on social media is literally an exception to exception to the rule. Yeah. What, are, how many people actually create content? 1% of the population. Yeah. Mm. If that mm. 0 0.5, that's an exception to the rule. Mm. But then we see it and we're like, wait a second everybody's doing it yeah. yeah like everybody's killing it mm -hmm. everybody's making money Money's it's like no this many people are doing yeah. it and like the that odds are people, so small yeah. mm. that's why it's only for highlights that's right and then if you're not like adjusting your self-awareness or planning an out <laughs> 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 one or the other because everybody has to flop yeah, yeah. so you better do it when you better hope you get to choose when you do when it. You do it. Mm. When you're like, okay, this is time. Like, I'm out. I'm gonna clock out now. Mm. Well said. Thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you for your time. Yeah, Claire. thank you, thank you, thank you. All thank that you. insight, all those gems. Gems, like, for real. Apes, we are roasting. I know. <laughs> I feel like we burned me. calories in here. I <laughs> know. <laughs> but did you see that interview that Drake did where he, um, Lil Yachty with, was with yes, Lil Yachty. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Drake was like, I'm going to quit when I'm 35. Yeah. Or whatever. No, when he said he thought he was going to quit when he's 35, yeah, exactly. and now that he's there. Making bars, being yeah. like, 35 yeah. is too old. Yeah. Quit. And now that he's at 35, he's like, yeah, I'm not ready yet. He's like, yeah, because even you realize there's more money to be made. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're going to go, yeah, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's even taking your place yet. You've got to yeah. bow out prematurely. Yeah. Mm. And that's something why all of us, like, I was like, I'm going to retire early. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. How are you going to, ideally, you're going to keep reaching a point where you keep excelling. Selling, yeah. Where you're just going to stop. Yeah. yeah. You're going to just leave that. <laughs> yeah. How can you? <laughs> oh, my God. Same place at 75. <laughs> Chit chatting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it freaks oh me out goodness. so much because this just will be it. Um, and maybe like you'll get a different job in media or you'll do more of this or less of this, but we're just not going to. Oh my gosh. Can't, can't, please don't say that. Um, strippers never stop stripping. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They went in there like, oh. replace this. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I'll just do it when I'm in college and then they're like, they're 38. <laughs> Yeah, because I've been thinking about oh yeah, when I retire, like in my mind when I said I was retiring tomorrow, I'm like, so what would I do? Like when I get up, what am I doing? And also the fact that I have never heard the phrase "cost of living" used to me. Oh. Yeah, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. the fact that that's like penetrated yeah. into us, yeah. 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 it's very yeah. dangerous. Yeah, like you can't you afford to do nothing. should all be aware. That there's a cost of living. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you check when you're going to a different country. Like, ooh, how much is the bread in Sweden? Yeah. <laughs> Not for your daily life. And then you're having to cross reference with, oh, is it this bread at your supermarket too? Yeah. yeah. Mm -mm. Oh my and we're God. trying to dip? No. <laughs> Everybody yeah. get used to working. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like thinking that we're going to be done is like the worst thing for you. Because then you lose the momentum you need to, to keep, keep going. Yeah, going. Keep going. Yeah. That's like, true. Had I not burnt out so many times, mm. it's like, we could really we'd be doing be, Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I can't go back. 
So I need to like maintain this like, level playing of working because we're going to be here for ages. Uh, yes. And if it's not working at this capacity, it's the decisions. I'm that so, way. like, let's say if I'm tomorrow, I feel like okay, I'm only working four hours this week. Fine. But then it's like, that's 60 hours of money you're not making. Yeah. I was yeah. just thinking that I was like four hours, all that money. And also, it doesn't even matter that you're not like doing the grunt work because the decisions that you make are so expensive. Mm. Constantly making expensive decisions. I remember I was trying to get out of this um this contract that I signed because um, I was like, get yeah. this isn't for me. Mm. Get out of this. In practice, I'm like, mm, I don't like it. Mm. It cost me 10k in lawyer fees <gasps> to get out of it. Mm. You almost no. might as well have done. It. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> It's like, mm. that's an expensive decision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to flippantly, like, just assume the best intention here and whatever. Or, like, you hire someone. Like, I've made so many bad hires in my life mm. because I believe people don't want to work. I don't want to work. Mm. So how am I going to empower someone <laughs> to do <laughs> <your job? laughs> yeah. like, all the benefits in the world? Mental health day, so on and so on. Oh, and my goodness. And also, I, th- I think that we don't have a good understanding of what our capabilities are. Mm. So when you're interviewing, you're like, I can do that. I'm a self-starter. And then you interview someone and then you give them a job and they've got a three month probation. And that's what's three months of paying someone? $20,000? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so I've got to factor in more bad decisions I'm going to make in the future. In the future. To do this. Well, thanks for the reality check, babe. Yeah. <laughs> Panama. Yeah. We'll join you in Panama Panama City, darling. Back to cash. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to Dubai. No income tax. (laughs) Dubai living. No, we could not. Imagine getting a rental in Dubai. I know, right? That's ridiculous. Oh, Oh, this poor. Oh, well, well, thank Thank you you so much again. Amazing. You know where to find us, guys. Do you want to plug yourself? It's all right. Should I just Google her? (laughs) No, just Google her everywhere. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye.